The food was good. Uh, um, the manager was really nice. Everybody there was really nice. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't anything negative about the restaurant. But what what do you have to say, Dave? You know, when you see stuff on a show or on TV or whatever, it seems like it just flows. But in real life, like production, man, there's so many factors that you don't think about as just like a normal viewer. Mm -hmm. Like the noise, the angles, the lighting. Uh, I don't want to say script because it's not like we're acting, but just the flow of how things go. Um, but I think we're doing pretty good. You know, we're, we're still kind of fresh in this game. And um, we're definitely trialing, airing it. Yeah. <clears throat> like, sure. even like right now, I'm the one, I'm sharing our live into the different Facebook groups and stuff like that. But, mm. you know, we're, hey, we're working on it soon. We are going to have a team, though. A team that works with us. Yeah. But I also wanted to mention before we get off of the thing and talking about, um, you know, the Flagler Weekly Facebook page. Um, we're going to be doing some other things with that, too, coming up. We're still moving into the new studio at the new location, uh, 15 days. We're going to start having, like, a weekly call-in. So, like, an old-school <laughs> call-in radio show local. So, you know, people can call in, bitch about stuff. Because everybody loves to chime in and say comments, but let's let's get it on air. And That's let, true. Let, let people say what they want to say. Um, That's true. It'll be an hour <clears throat> to an hour and a half, depending on how it goes. We're going to keep doing it, even if it takes a while to pick up. But uh, look for that. And also the food reviews that John mentioned. That's going to go on there, too. And uh, Food reviews are going to be dope. Yeah, and then we want this Flagler weekly Facebook page to be a real hub of local activity and yeah information you know and also on our page we're putting other stories you know that we can can share that we find local that people might want to know about pertaining to flagler county and so yeah yeah so what we're going to be um trying to do more of is with our production level be a little bit more organized and stuff start off of local content but um we we were saying that we haven't recorded since 2023 hit how's it feel man how's it feel to be in 2023 it's a fresh start i don't want to say a fresh start you know we're moving in a couple of weeks so that's gonna kind of solidify the change a little bit but i look at it as just like a new year to just try to do better than last year, just as a marker. Put it, face it more towards you. All right, is that better? See these technical issues, man. Mic placement. <laughs> the mic, look where the mic is facing, not facing towards your mouth. Yeah, but look at my cord, it's so tight, I can't even. Mm -hmm. All right, is that better? Hold on, let me see. Does it sound better? All right, is that better? Twist it, twist it. Look at the fucking god, the goddamn cord is like this shit. All right, Maybe. that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I thought it was fine. Mm -hmm. um, what was I saying? <laughs> um, how your twenty twenty three is going? Yeah, I'm saying. Well, I was about to say that uh, as like a marker as a fresh start. Mm. Not really a fresh start, but. A new page in the book to add on, to build on, try to do a little better than the last year. Um, I don't really like the resolution. You're not a resolution guy? Nah, because I feel like that's like a fad, you know, like. I love New Year's. When you make a change, though, you just, people are very um, habitual. So just saying like, oh, hey, I'm going to stop doing this, stop doing that. I just feel like I appreciate the effort, but. I just feel like it's uh, a seed planted in a unfertile soil, mm. if you will. That's deep. Yeah, a little, little so, Bible reference. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you have any goals or do you have any plans coming up for 2023? Like, Well. Are you like a day-by-day -day type person? No, I mean, I have 
loose plans. I don't really call it like a yearly plan, but you know, I do have uh, another, in addition to my, my main job, um, David Nickel Home Services, throw a free plug in there. You know, it's, it's just doing small jobs, cleanups, little handyman work, mm -hmm. nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to, be doing that 80 hours a week because um, mm -hmm. it is a second job but right uh, you know do a little bit of that i mean still working on the uh podcast and the flag of the weekly page that's going to be a thing <clears throat> um what do you think okay maybe not any goals or anything but do you think there's anything you want to leave about dave in 2022 like i'll give you an example for me procrastination mm. i gotta leave that in the past like i feel like i'm i'm growing up and although like adults are late i when i look at myself i don't want to be like late you know what i mean or like i just want to value my time more you know yeah i feel like i was late to stuff for no reason it's like what were you doing you know yeah no i definitely do that somewhat um I have quite a bit of free time, which I, I don't know. I guess it depends on what you want to spend your time on. Like I could be working harder or, or doing other things, but you know, I like, I go to the gym like four times a week. Um, we like, and it's been kind of cold a little while, but mainly like we go like going to the beach, shooting pool, mm. um, doing some yoga from time to time. Mm. Just, you know, I don't like, in my 20s, you know, I was all about get money, get money, get money, get money. Mm -hmm. And that's all I did. That's all I thought about. Now, you know, I'm 40. Um, now, I'm not saying I'm rich and retired, <laughs> but, you know, I, I like my lifestyle. Mm. Yeah. Um, I got a solid main job and just, I want to do some other stuff, but I still want to do me. I have a stress-free type lifestyle i've had a stressful life so that makes sense yeah makes sense. you know um money isn't the only currency mm. you know that kind of is like one of our topics that we that i have of to talk on today well um before we get the before we get to that i'll talk about some of i do i am a new year's resolution person okay so a new year's resolution that i have is because i do look at it as like you know a a start of new, a beginning of sorts, like anything that you might have been dealing with in the past, you don't have to deal with that today, you know? So I would, how can I explain? I'm only drinking water this whole year. Like, okay, so this is like a coffee or a tea or something. So I'm not talking about that, but like no sodas, no, sh um, mm. nothing crazy. You know what I mean? Like this is all natural. I'm not drinking any kind of processed anything or anything like that. Um, um, this is going to be a topic that we're talking about later, but I'm eating healthier at work. You know, like I don't want to, man, before I was eating like McDonald's drive through Burger Oh, King, I know it. <laughs> yeah, I know it. It's like, dude, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not good. And I feel like, you know, sometimes when I eat Chinese food, it's like, man, I can feel the diabetes. You know what I mean? Like, it's coming. I mean, I even asked you like a month ago, I said, what else do you eat besides Chinese food? Because <laughs> every time you roll, you got like a box of Chinese food. Yeah. I love it, especially when yeah. I come to Palm Coast. Yeah. Because I feel like there, it's a good Chinese spot and not a lot of places have good Chinese spots. Well, you know, I will say this, though. Like, that's not a blind New Year's resolution, though. That's kind of like something you've been, so you're already in the steps of the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you're really bandwagoning on, but you are using it as a, as a jump board, mm. as a time to, to go ahead and start. Mm. You know, when I say I don't like the resolutions, it's just kind of like, let me just pick something because I want to have a new resolution. Mm. So I, I don't know if people make decisions like that, but I mean, that's how it kind of appears, I feel like you know? Yeah, mine are just like things that I want to like. I'll say another one that I have is um, I saw a friend's post and uh, shout out to Johnny Five. That's whose post it was. 
Shout out to Johnny Five on TikTok, and he's local from Flagler area. You guys go give him a follow. And the Johnny has three ends in TikTok, and um, he said this year he wants to do ten thousand push-ups. Mm. And I looked at that, and that's thirty push-ups a day. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not that bad. I could do thirty push-ups a day. You know, and so I said, I'm actually going to do 40. I'm going to do 20 in the morning and 20 at night every single day. That's a nice round number to Yeah, you to know, do like I don't want to do like 15. I feel like I'm shorting myself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I'm going to knock out the 20. And then it's like, I actually feel like I already accomplished something for the day also. You know what I mean? And then it makes the rest <laughs> of my day go well. Gets that blood flow pumping and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Gets the energy going. And I feel like it's a good idea the way you're trying to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, Cutting out sodas you could do. Mm-hmm. Making better food choices you could do. Mm-hmm. The push-ups is just a little something you can do. So I, I feel like when people just dive into stuff, mm-hmm. that's not going to work out. Right. But I feel like your plan is pretty good. A little here, a little there is going to yeah. add up. And and that's what I'm saying also with the water thing. Like, it's not crazy. Like, this, I feel like, is majority water. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, coffee is not really bad for you. It's the um, the sugar that you put in. And I remember you saying something that it was like pretty much allowed during Ramadan. Was I think the coffee is yeah. Is that or like I wasn't saying that. I think somebody else was saying that. Oh, I think I was talking to Ronnie, but yeah. um, yeah. So. But yeah, that's like a natural yeah. product. Mm-hmm. But um, those things are slight, but it's so crazy because I really feel like between the just the drinking water and eating cleaner and healthier alone that that diet right there i'm gonna drop weight Mm -hmm. and then also the 20 push-ups and the 20 crunches morning and night like i'm gonna be honest with you bro i was like looking at myself and i just feel like i know it's only been like four days but i really feel like i'm i see a change yeah i mean if you like i think it's just maybe from like the chemicals that you were taking and just mm. gone that much without even like any really body change, just clearing out that yeah. that poison. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, and I feel the little changes too. Like, you know, I, we have I have a protein shake every day because mm-hmm. I I only eat primarily meat, ninety mm-hmm. percent. Um, okay, and eggs, and protein shake, but we don't have. Are eggs considered meat? I mean, it's unborn meat mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i think so can i mean it's protein that, can you look that up see if eggs are considered meat i mean i think it's 100 percent protein but you know there's ovo vegetarians that are vegetarians that still eat eggs so they don't consider that meat you know like there's uh lacto vegetarians piscitarians that's crazy how they don't consider that meat yeah, yeah it says here they they don't mm. um but i'm trying to see what they would classify it as one second i know it's like all protein though but the point is is like every time i make a shake i put two raw eggs in a big scoop of peanut butter mm. and like i run a calorie deficit every day and i'm like not really seeing i'm, I'm seeing a lot of results what does running a calorie deficit mean all right is that like, good well you get your your height weight bmi body mass index yeah and then pretty much they t- how much calories you should be eating a day a lot of people are on like a 2000 calorie diet mm. that's like the average mm-hmm. <clears throat> i try to run at like about 1800 a day but still get 150 grams of protein a day um so anyway the point is just cut out the, the peanut butter mm. and i was I'm saving like 100 calories a scoop mm-hmm. and that it's gonna add up over a year you know and that's just a small little doable change getting the practice of it and it's done Right. Change is done. What do you think? Uh, it says that the USDA categorizes eggs as just an animal product. So it's just an animal product that contains protein. <laughs> animal product. Yeah. That sounds like some if kind it, of like. They're in the protein food group. Mm. But that's crazy because if once it hatches, it's going to be a meat. Yeah. What else is in the protein food group? Uh, all foods made from meat, poultry, seafood, beans and peas, eggs, processed soy products, nuts and seeds are considered part of the protein food group. So protein okay. food group. So they're saying it's a meat, but not a meat, but it's in the meat group, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> right? Meat. That's what I'm saying. That's like some. I feel like that. You said that's <laughs> the FDA. USDA. Oh, USDA. But you know, like these, those like organizations are prone to uh, 
saying this or saying that based on what they want to sell. Hey, can I have a water, please? Yeah, me too. Um. Okay, so. Oh, I will say this too. Um, another New Year's resolution that I'm doing is I'm tracking my finances. Mm. I feel like I'm really growing up this year. You know what I mean? Like in and out. What's going in, what's going out. You know what I mean? And I think it's just important to really track it. Thank you. And I'm not even saying that I want to like, I'm not even saying that I want to like, even cut back. I just want to see what's going on. You know, you'll see one thing that I'm proud of besides for the gas that I put in the car to go here. I haven't spent any money yesterday or today. And usually I was spending money on like breakfast, lunch, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I bought like oranges. I bought those, um, what are those peanut butter and jelly things called? Crustables. I love those things. And I bought some like, uh, salted peanuts and stuff like that and then and then i got um some chicken breasts and i made some chicken breasts cut them up in half made it into about six pieces and stuff like that and i could take one piece each day to work but man i'm not gonna lie i had that with some spinach and it filled me up just to the point where i felt something in my stomach you know what i mean because mm -hmm. before even at mcdonald's with like double cheap bacon cheat or double quarter pounder and shit i'm like bro this is heavy you know what i mean yeah it's super heavy and once you stop doing it mm -hmm. you'll realize how it is like yeah we never go get fast food but i won't say never but every once in a while mm -hmm. way once in a while but then when you eat like it just rocks your stomach it's just, it's sure. not good you're just not used to that anymore and it's like really like poison i guess for real yeah and also too like you know home food is definitely a savings you know like i used to go out all the time to eat mm. but now like i could make a dinner that i could say two people mm -hmm. even if i have like steaks and sides you like it's like buying one get one free at home and, and you know even if you have like less luxury items you could save even more i mean I, I feel like i could make dinner for 15 dollars for two people and have it to be decent whereas like every other night it's like boom 50 dollars 50 dollars yeah yeah that shit adds up and prices are going out the window mm -hmm. um so yeah that's what i'm working on um i know that we wanted to stay local in the beginning yeah um this is a semi-local subject but it deals with new years and it deals with local but i want to talk about and this is a uh, part of the business corner for right now i think um actually i think we were going to talk about it today is january 5th mm -hmm. we were going to talk about um i invested in planet fitness mm. And I wanted you to express, because th that's the gym you go to, Planet mm -hmm. Fitness. Okay, so before we talk about your experience, let's look at how my Planet Fitness stock has done over this week, because I bought it before the first. Mm. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> okay. So, what I will say is, for my total return on the planet fitness stock i'm up 15 cents <laughs> what percentage though uh i'm up 10 percent. <clears throat> I, I invested 20 dollars. i'm actually my total gain is up 70.75 percent so not even one percent mm. but i am up but you know being that we do go there pretty regularly the past week has been jammed up it's, yeah. it's really full yo that's crazy so it says today's thursday but on tuesday it hit a spike of 80 dollars and tuesday was the day after january no that was january 3rd third was tuesday but like okay sunday was the first everybody's chilling the second everybody's like still off and on vacation mm -hmm. the first everybody's i'm back Boom, that shit <laughs> jumped. that's crazy yeah and like i said you could definitely tell that like the new year's resolutions are 
happening. So how's the gym look? It's, it's packed. Is it? Yeah. Packed? Like, Little Dave is packed? Wow. Yeah. The gym is so packed, bro. Yeah. Really? yeah. And it's, it's, it's a lot of newbies? Yes. Yeah. People be taking a, like a long time and then like we'd be in the ab section and it's just like it's too much range for these people because they really don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm not going to cap, bro. Mm -hmm. Seen this one lady. I'm pretty sure he saw her too. She was doing like push ups, but like, you know, like a proper push ups, like tight, like elbows in. Those elbows were so flared. She was, yeah. I thought she was about to break one of like her bones. Like, if like if you like tire yourself out with them push ups over there flaring your. And, uh, and like Planet Fitness, and like, and first of all, like, we're not like Olympic, Olympian athletes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we've been going regularly for a solid year and some change yeah mm -hmm. and i don't think that it's bad that the people are going there you know people should be healthy mm -hmm. but uh, the thing about planet fitness is you're not gonna be committed get out of the way but you know there you there's no judgment zone first of all <laughs> so you can't be like hey um and it's not that's not really good gym etiquette anyway just to roll around upon somebody and be like hey you're not doing that right mm -hmm. especially just out of the blue so i'm just kind of excited for them to start dropping off i, okay. I, I want to report back in uh about a month yeah and, and see how it drops back off it's normal okay and now we go all times different days so we get like a wide mm. sample of the different crowds there's always the after school crowd mm -hmm. the after work crowd mm -hmm. so is it open 24 hours yeah wow that's dope it's pretty dead in the, in the nighttime though sundays is the best day to go why nobody's ever in there on sunday you think it's best when no one's in there or people there no it's better when nobody's in there why do you think that because we're there to work man <laughs> <laughs> like we we stay for like for, for a couple hours like two sometimes three hours like four times a week we got like when we first started we were just going down the line hitting the machines mm -hmm. now like we know i don't say we know what we're doing but we have a plan we're seeing some results. We know how it's going to go. And mm -hmm. things get added on. So the workout just keeps getting longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And that's the bad thing about the new people. Like, for instance, there's an area where there's just the benches where people, like in front of the dumbbells, we can do the different presses, this and that. There's the area with the, the machines. And then there's like the area with the, with the Smith machine. Mm. <clears throat> now there's only like a few of each of those four or five so like we had there's people in there yesterday like doing lunges on the benches it's like <laughs> don't you, what are you doing these are this is the bench area <laughs> and there's you're like lunges lunging around, around all up in the area and it's like already like way crowded and it's totally like unaware mm -hmm. but it's like frustrating but at the same time it's not my gym i don't own it so you know you gotta it's society you gotta mm -hmm. live in it Okay, now I got some honest questions for you, man. All right. I or I have some honest questions. I need some honest answers. <laughs> and this is like no judgment zone by anybody. And I'm not trying to be inappropriate. Um, when you see new people at the gym, is it more new girls or new guys? Hmm. I think it's a pretty even crowd. I feel like, hmm. like last time we went, like, yesterday i mean yeah i would say like it's pretty 50 50 maybe mm -hmm. 60 40 in either direction i don't really know but mm -hmm. it's just pretty close okay now so like what you just said was like how you're there to work and stuff like that mm -hmm. do you think like people dress up like they're there to work or do you feel like people dress up to go to the gym? I feel like a lot of the girls do. Like, they'll put, have, like, gym brand clothes on. Yeah, and, like, cute outfits, outfits and stuff. Like, the little gloves and stuff like that. Yeah, and, like, the people who work out a lot, they don't really care. Guys do that, too. They just go. I want to be honest. Yeah. Like, guys do that, too. I feel like maybe, like, some of the younger dudes do. But even, like, guys that are, like, really fit. Mm -hmm. I don't really see them with, like, all the gym name brand not at Planet Fitness anyway. I think mm. like other gyms that are kind of more hardcore, they probably there's, might. There's this one guy in there. He's probably like 
top you know who i'm talking about it's the young kid he's like <laughs> super big he's in like top three he doesn't he doesn't wear any of that mm. he wears like a, a t-shirt he cut himself you know mm -hmm. yeah i see because i'm like who's buying all this gym clothes some people like do you really need like just wear like old clothes i wear like the same thing every time i got like black shorts black tank top mm. and then I, I wear it like a few times and i wash it and then um do you do the massage table and stuff in there heck yeah every we time no no mm. we went yesterday mm -hmm. and we had like a pretty hard back day of the day before mm. and uh man it was hurting so bad like the, the machine was just like blasting you and like in your shoulders like where you're actually sore at mm -hmm. that's how you like know you need it if it really hurts that means you're tight mm -hmm. and like the first like i don't know 10 passes probably it was it was pretty brutal i even texted him i was like hey man this is hurting today mm -hmm. and he was like hell yeah <laughs> that's funny do you guys work out together or like on your own <coughs> no we go set for set mm. on everything so then why'd you text them oh because at the massage tables there's like a wall in between oh, each one and oh. it's loud too with mm -hmm. the thing um blasting into you gotcha and there was some other lady like sitting next to us so i didn't want to be all like mm -hmm. just yelling in there man it's hers right <laughs> <That's funny>. um <clears throat> can you share it to your groups real quick no i shared it to a few all right cool but john i'm old man this kind of thing is a little distracting because, you know um all right let's talk let's talk local man let's let's get real real okay. local well, you bring up the next topic here. all right um well with the local things you know you want to you want to talk crime we talked business corner you want to talk the the crime corner let's do it okay well one of the articles you have brought out was mm -hmm. about the guy who robbed the um, mobile. Yeah, the one it's, and I'm 90% that it's the one over by Seminole Woods, in between Seminole Woods and Belcher, all the way down by US-1. That one that's over there, like before you go to like, I think it's like. Um, Are you sure it's not the one right off the highway there? It's not the one right off the highway. Oh, I know what mobile you're talking about. Mm-hmm. On US one, you said. Yeah. It's kind of far down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Like all the way down by like the K section. And stuff yeah. Yeah. Like that. I, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I believe it's that one. The kid was twenty one years old, had an AR fifteen, mm. and um, he did a string of robberies. He's from Ormond, and I was just like, "Yo, this kid's bold." And it's like he got away, but then they figured out who he was and stuff like that. And it said he got eight more charges and Volusia coming to him. Yeah. I think having, you know, if you do an armed robbery, the 10, 20 life thing is in there too. Like 10 years if you rob somebody with a gun, 20 years if you fire it, and then life if you fire it and hit somebody or kill somebody. Mm. But you know what, man? I, I think people like that should be going to jail. You know, and being that he is only 21 now, he's on like a little crime spree or something. I don't know. I mean, eight charges. I think if he got like 10 years, that would be good. Because it's not like your whole life. Yeah. But you're going to learn a lesson. You know, because people do need to learn lessons. How much is he going to serve? Eight? I think you do quite a bit of your time. You do 85% of your time in Florida. Um, but, you know, I hate the idea. Unless they're like really like just bad, bad, crazy. Mm. Giving somebody that young like 50 years, 40 years. That's, that's practically a life sentence and you know when you get out after that long too you're not your development stops too so you're getting out at 50 and you're like practically the age you were in mm -hmm. and, and some aspects you can obviously get smarter get degrees this and that but your social skills right in the real world and the technology is crazy yeah i just feel i feel i have a lot of sympathy for like especially like drug dealers that like you get you make a sale when you're a kid maybe you're good at business and you're not it kind of punishes you for not being a screw-up say i'm 18 i'm from a poor neighborhood i notice i can make this money doing this i stack up my money i'm good then i get a case now this is still bad stuff you know what i mean but then to give that kid like 40 years is just like you know that's like a, he's like a victim of circumstance and he's smart so he sees hey this opportunity is right in my face mm. 
I don't know anybody that owns the company. I don't want to work at the Circle K. You know, so I have sympathy for that. But, you know, running up in a place with a gun, that's dangerous. Like, anything could happen. You can mess around and kill somebody. But an AR-15, it's like, like, come on, man. Anything. This, hey, this is Palm Coast. Even a revolver, like, it's, just, it's too much. It's too much. It's not safe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just too bold. Definitely, man. Appreciate everybody watching the podcast right now. If you guys could please all share this podcast, please. You know what I mean? What's up, everybody? Carlos, how you doing? Brandon, how you doing? Ellie, what up? Um. Okay. It's funny. We were just talking about this, but um, old people learning technology. Remember we said that would be a topic? Yeah. And we were just talking when you said. It's oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me, yeah. It's hard, man, and I'm not even that old. Um, little Dave, can you do me a favor? Can you look up, is it harder for old people to learn technology? Because my thought would be it would be easier because you've seen so much stuff coming. Like, this is my thing. Like, I don't, like when Oculus came out, I feel like I'm older. It's not harder for me to figure things out. But, all right, when I was like 18, mm-hmm. no. Like 18, 19, I had, I had my own place. Mm-hmm. I bought a computer. I had a computer room in my house. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even use it, you know? Like I, I, And I'm already like past 18 at this point too. I, no, I use computers. I'm kind of an IT guy at my job. Mm-hmm. So I know some things and I'm capable. But you know, and, and, like so, the social and it's media. like the social media is kind of different though too. Mm-hmm. But i think the later you start something just the harder it is to to pick up Mm. because like i'm 42 you're what 34 34 that's what eight years Mm -hmm. so at 18 i got my first computer and that was when computers were like starting to pop and everybody was getting one Mm -hmm. so then you're 10 so computers are becoming popular when you're 10 now Mm -hmm. baby oh you know he's born after 2000 they were around and then yeah. plus the phones too and like the programs and mm-hmm. and like one thing that i'm and we're kind of learning together is like okay i can see where you come from with that jumping on the algorithms and the way to flow traffic to get it where you want it to go mm-hmm. by people following links and mm-hmm. that's that's all that's like crazy thing. yeah and that's yeah. The, yeah on google this is more like a like a physical like thing for like older people it says that like a lot of them have like hearing and visual limitations. So with like all the, everything on the screen is just too much for old people, you know? Mm. Like there's too much there. What do you mean old people though? Like older people. Like 60? Like 70? I mean, you want to go into like eye, like sight, like. Well, I mean, I could see everything and it's still complicated. Well, like, <laughs> well, imagine if it was, if you had bad eyesight, how much even more complicated that'd be. More so. No, I, I get it. Like, I remember like when I was doing like some orientations that when I worked at the hospital, mm-hmm. we would have to wear like, they had different pairs of glasses that like simulated um, different conditions you might have with your vision, mm-hmm. like for old people and stuff like that. So I get what you're saying. Like that stuff could be a factor and, and it is a factor. Definitely. Um, what? Oh. What else happened today? So, what I have going on, um, we spoke about... Wait, is this, are you about to talk about the Palm Coast guy? What Palm Coast guy? The the one who just like murdered the dude at the Microsoft? Oh, you wanted me... Bro, there was some breaking news. Yeah, it's cri- know crime corner, bro. Crime corner. I didn't know if you wanted to break this news or not. Yeah, heck yeah. But, you know, we were looking at the Flagler Live and some crazy mm. stuff happened today. So, there is a situation where a guy named Brennan Hill now faces murder charge as Savannah Gonzalez's victim in Microtel shooting dies. So, <clears throat> on Wednesday, hold on. Previously, Hill, 33, had faced an attempted second degree murder charge. No, oh, he's a shooter. Though more grave, the new charge does not materially change the sort of sentence Hill faces if convicted. He faced the possibility of life in prison, even on the attempted murder charge. He still does. The state has added two new charges 
aggravated battery causing seriously bodily injury with a firearm, also carrying a maximum penalty of life in prison. Wow. And throwing a deadly missile in an occupied vehicle. But what does it say? Like what what was pop, what popped off? Like what happened? Okay, let's see. Why are you looking that up? I, I want to. I would say too. Like that's pretty wild. Um, that's also like the kind of behavior that needs to get get arrested. You know what I mean? Because. Well, re, no, read the story more though first, because I don't want to comment on it. For I don't want to, I don't okay. want to judge, prejudge by where they live at. Okay. Well, I'm not going to give the address, but they're from the F section. Okay. And um, it says that Gonzalez, who's the female, he'd made threats that he was going to shoot her and stuff like that, and uh, so she would like record him low key and stuff like that. It says. One such video records his anger as he interrogates Gonzalez about the whereabout of his drugs. Mm. I will beat the shit out of you, Hill tells her at one point, later getting angry over the fact that Gonzalez had not bought a gun for him as he had demanded. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So, okay, here's, uh, hold on. Let me go with my original assumption. I was going to say, like these hotel folk, bro. <laughs> you know, like, that's crazy, like, Stay in a hotel because you got drugs because you really don't got a crib of your own because you're kind of like, yeah. And you're over here beating up. Oh, how old was the girl? Hmm. Let's see. Either way, man, it's effed up. Like, he, he's displacing all that stuff on her, being an abuser, and then he shoots her. And he already shot someone else, too. I say, um,. That's that's probably good that he he got arrested too, man. That's a that's a <clears throat> that's a loose cannon, bro. It doesn't say his age. Well, either way. Hold on. It says, um, angry, him being angry over the fact that Gonzalez had not bought a gun for him as he has demanded. He then tells Gonzalez, "If I was going to kill you, I would fucking kill you. I don't need a gun." He adds, "You will get your face smashed in like Chanel did. Don't touch my fucking drugs." The transcript in the prosecutor's motion refers to Chanel. The victim was also in the habit of sending the videos to Torsha. The victim. That's mm. crazy. Further videos quote him as threatening as us. I'm going to hurt you so I can leave. That's Please what he don't said? make me hurt you. And some apologetic statements. I don't like that. Don't say the threatening statements, but then like say, oh, then some apologetic statements. You know what I mean? No, that's like. Also, I want to know what she said, but I'm not victim blaming or anything like that but this is like well it sounds like they're involved in some wild stuff that they shouldn't be involved in for one and who knows even how she looks she's sweating the dude that's and that's, rest in peace and prayers to this woman yeah and, that, and that's, she lost her and life. that's codependency man and that guy is like a, a domestic abuser mm -hmm. you know and frustrated takes out you know like when he says i'm i'm sorry don't please don't make me do this to you that's like that's what he said that's his quote this dude yeah his quote is what no he, he said don't make me do this to you yeah i'm sorry see that that's not sorry that's like a justifying way that mm -hmm. yeah you you can't make somebody do something to you you're choosing to do that just because of something you don't like mm -hmm. so that's like pretty common like abuser lingo so also check this out and i'm not encouraging any kind of crazy behavior from anyone but i'm just i want to show you something that it says in here and so some people know how the law works it says it is ordinarily illegal for an adult to video or audio record another person in private conversation without the person's consent when detectives asked hill whether he knew he was being recorded he said he did not care, and they mm. put quotation marks, making that prohibition moot in prosecutors' view, and the evidence therefore legally admissible mm. in court. So that means, like, and I, I just posted this thing where a guy was like, if anybody asks you any questions in the courtroom, like, don't answer them. Yeah, you should not say anything ever. I'm actually gonna say But you know, that's just, uh, I don't give a f attitude. I don't care, dumbass mm -hmm. mother. I'm trying not to cuss though. Mm -hmm. um, 
Good, man. I'm glad he got arrested, bro. Good. It's not a loose scanner. You know, he needs a, a solid 10 to think about it. <laughs> but he's out, but look now at the same time that dude's 32 years old man 33 and you out here living like that 32 33 years old you that's like 22 year old behavior like what's what's, what's gonna be the outcome is he magically just gonna get his shit together one day and be like you know what? i don't think he should go to jail for a lot, but i mean he did kill her so oh yeah he, even he, 20 he should, probably more he, yeah yeah i was thinking of the robbery guy i'm sorry mm. yeah you killed her yeah you, you're done yeah, you're and that's that's good that's good Cause right. that's what I was about to say. At that age, are you gonna learn anyway? Mm -hmm. No. All right, listen to this video. Well, is this about the same thing? No. Oh, let's see what we got. All right, this isn't working. Supposed to be plugged in. Anyway, what is it? Um, it's a video talking about something what we're talking about. Oh, about getting arrested? Yeah. Look, now I mentioned on like, I don't know, maybe like the second podcast or something like that about how we watch a lot of First Amendment things and we watch a lot of um, interrogation videos and whatnot. And then there's like a guy who's like a lawyer that does this on the side, you know, on his YouTube channel. Where he goes and he says all the statutes and this and that. And, um, yeah, man, people say the wrong things. They say anything because anything can and will be held against you. But you know what? People think that they're smart. So they're like, oh, I'm going to say this so the police think this and paint myself to look this way. And you didn't have to say anything. It don't matter if the, didn't have to say anything. If the police... You're not selling the police because once it goes to the court, he said this, he said that, like you just said, that's that is submissible. But if he would have kept his mouth shut, that right. wouldn't have been submissible. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in court, it, it don't matter what the people think. It matters what the jury sees when it boils down to it. If you even take your case to to trial, but that's a whole another topic right there, which you know most people don't because of DNA. That's why they let you smoke. They'll come back. All right. Now that we got this, let's see what it is. Check this out. Uh -oh. I know I joke around and play around, but this is a real, real, real topic I'm going to speak on. And this is a that ass topic that you guys need to listen to right now. Take some time to listen. This is only three minutes. If you ever find yourself in this room, I'm going to let you know right now. If you find yourself in this room, this is not a game. This is not a joke. This is serious. Them guys do not play, bro. If they got you up there, it's for two reasons. Either you're a suspect or you're a person of interest. They could detain you. Any cop that sees you in the street and knows you has an I-car, they can detain you, cuff you, take you to the precinct, take you to the second floor, to the detective squad, where they're going to question you for whatever it is. Listen to me. Now, pause. Is that, you think that's true? I think it goes state to state. There's different um, detainment laws and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But they will bring you in for what's called a consensual encounter. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, you can leave any time. Come down here and talk to us. Mm -hmm. But you can leave any time. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Well, you yeah. never you shouldn't do it. Never in your life answer any questions. Never. Never in your life. Because you know why? If they know the answers, they wouldn't ask the question. So if they're asking the questions, they don't know the answers. Mm -hmm. That's why you're there. They don't know the answers. And if they ask, it's because they don't know. So believe me when I tell you is this. Don't ask any questions and don't answer any questions. Just listen. Pay attention to details. With little details, you start li listening, paying attention. Okay, cool. Now I know what they got and what they don't got. So, I, I've seen this in a lot of movies and stuff like that, but let me ask you this. What, what do you think about if, like, everybody doesn't say anything in a crime? Like, let's say... Let's say a gun was shot and then like it's in a car and maybe like the people get pulled over, but nobody says whose gun it is. I think that's probably best. That's probably best. <laughs> and like but that's, that's not going to happen though. Because here's the thing though the police are trained. Mm -hmm. Those, like, it ain't like a street cop mm -hmm. who's interrogating you. Mm -hmm. You can't put some street dude, 20 years old, whatever, 30 years old, mm -hmm. in a room 
you might be talking to two cops, but mm -hmm. there might be five cops back there. Mm -hmm. Dude, this, this, this. And then they, they set traps, mm. and you're not as smart as you think, and you're definitely not as smart as five people trained. Mm -hmm. but and they just really take in one class. They take mm -hmm. all kinds of classes. Like mm -hmm. that's their job. And you're scared. And you're scared. And and they and they already know that. And that's part mm -hmm. of the training. That's, that's a way to go. And they also know people are going to tell half truths and minimize. Mm. Oh, I was by there earlier. Oh, so you were there. <laughs> you know, like that's the, mm. and that's something to build on. Mm. And then your dumb ass will say something else. Mm -hmm. And now they start getting these pieces because they have a, they have an assumption or like a basic thought of what they're going to do or what they think happened. And not to say that if nobody doesn't say anything doesn't mean nobody's not going to go to jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's other evidence they can get, but it's going to make it harder. Mm. But I would say that 99% of people are going to crack. Okay. It's just too, they're, they're trained. They're trained. Let's see what he says. Believe it or not, that's why in the Miranda versus Arizona, that's the only reason why you got the right to shut up. Miranda versus the state of Arizona is why you got the right to shut up. That's why it says you got the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Anything you say can and will be used against you. They're not going to help you. They're not here to help you. They're not here to make you save yourself. No, that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy that they say that. Come on, buddy. It, You'll feel better. Just get it off your chest. <laughs> it's like put your hands behind your back. You have the, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used, not for you. Oh, no. Yeah. Not for you. Against you. Against you. They're like, conducting an investigation, and you're the subject of that investigation. So you're only helping them get you. Yeah. And it's like, that's really creepy, man. It's like. But see, the people think that they can sell the police right there, that they're not guilty. Mm -hmm. And then that's part of the training. Oh, I'm your buddy. I do want to help you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe you. I'll oh, I understand judge. why you would have done that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she was a bitch, mm -hmm. you know? And then that's probably going to use that on that guy mm -hmm. from the last article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know how that is. My old lady, blah, blah, you know? Man, and I heard she was recording you. Like, how yeah, do you feel? Exactly. I don't give a fuck that bitch recorded me. Yeah, and then, uh -huh. you know, he thinks like you're all homeboys with the police, and he's, mm -hmm. he's doing his job. Man. And you're... Let's see. Let's finish this off real quick. The right to shut up. That's why he says you got the right... This works. Listen to me. Never drink nothing. They can offer you water, soda. Never drink. That's your fingerprints. When you touch the cup or you touch the soda. Never smoke nothing because when you touch this bogey, that's your fingerprints and that's your DNA. That's why when they let you smoke, they'll come back. Let me throw this out right here. I can't let you have this. You can start a fire. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm telling you right now. That's how they play. They'll leave. They'll come back. They'll be like, let me take this out. They put it in a Ziploc bag or they'll escort you back downstairs and be like, you better go. And then they'll take your DNA and your fingerprints. And then two, three weeks later, after forensics brings the results, they come and catch you. Come and get you just like that. Come on. We got DNA and we got fingerprints. Be like, what the hell? How the hell? Don't worry about that. Your main job is to listen here and pay attention. Be respectful. Don't be disrespectful. Be polite and be respectful. At the end of the day, they're doing their job. You can't hate them. At the end of the day. But make sure you remember this. Whenever you do something wrong, do it right. Somebody's always watching. When you do something wrong, but whenever you yeah, so that's pretty much what he's talking about. But that's pretty crazy, though. Like, I, I feel like here's that is, okay. we can and will. Like, bro, to, I have to tell you right now. Yeah. I have to read you your exactly. Miranda rights. That's crazy. They have to. Yeah, and you know what though? But even just you know, some people will be like, "Oh, you didn't read my, my Miranda rights," because sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. Mm -hmm. That only covers a certain set of circumstances. Mm. I'm I'm like kind of conflicted about that because it's like, little Dave, I need you to look that up too. Do police have to read your their your Miranda rights? I mean, it's technically yeah. a law, but what I'm saying is, is like, those are all technicalities. But if you didn't do nothing, you wouldn't have to worry about nothing. Mm. So, like, I get it, and I'm for like your constitution and amendments and this and that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, police ain't just arresting people for no reason. 
You know what I mean? So if you didn't do something, give them your fucking DNA. Mm. This, that. You know what I mean? Like, if you really didn't do it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I understand. That. Like, if you really didn't do it, you really shouldn't be. I think that's hard to say, though. Again, at the same time, because they be doing some who even knows? Like, the, the police could be against you, though. But mm -hmm. see, that's just a slippery slope, man. So I would still probably say, just don't say nothing. But I'm not trying to sit here and act like I'm an advocate to like f over the police to get people that are mm -hmm. criminals like just off on a technicality. Like I don't like that, and like the public should be safe. This is from uh, St. Pete criminal attorney. If you're in custody and the police want to question you, they must first read you your Miranda rights. Failure to do so will not necessitate the dismissal of the charges, mm -hmm. but it may cause statements against you to be ruled. Yeah. inadmissible yeah in court. Hmm. yeah that's what it is it's like they can still use other evidence against you but they might not be able to use the evidence that you gave against yourself against you hmm. that's all i'd say okay um real quick little dave i forgot we said we were going to try and go live on instagram um can you pull up that chair i don't think it's doing anything back there like put it in front of you and put this in there hey um This is like the kind of um, things I kind of wanted to avoid, though. What? What's happening right now? Like, um, you know, we're not. You wanted to avoid us, like, um, yeah, like the setup and stuff like that. Yeah, like any technical. I thought thing. we were still doing. I thought we were still doing it, where like we are trying out different things and stuff. Yeah, but ultimately, when we get rolling better, I don't want any conversation to get stopped or distracted from worrying about some piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying, like, um, as as people on the show, we gotta we just gotta be talking. Okay. You know, because mm -hmm. the, right the, the dialogue back and forth is the number one thing that that we got going on. Okay. Like I mean, technically, everything could be shared after the fact. Mm -hmm so ah my uh, yeah that my, looks good too yeah but my topics are on on there on screen um on that thing but i think i sent them to you oh, but yeah. we could just keep talking for a little bit maybe if you want to go to um one of your topics well let's let's talk a little bit more about palm coast stuff mm -hmm. um because we're almost wrapped up on that um you know there's not much news on palm coast and um we're following like a lot of different people online mm -hmm. and different local publications and whatnot trying yeah. to to find out something to talk about pertaining directly to palm coast what i've noticed is man there's a lot of people like every other day someone's getting killed on 95 or us1 like in flagler county that is true which is crazy now do you think that happens in every county they just don't report it and stuff like that well maybe they report it there but yeah as not. far as us but i don't know i mean they, they say that like car crashes are like a high cause of death nationwide but you don't even really realize it on, on a small scale, like unless you read the news like we do, mm -hmm. really trying to, but yeah, that one lady would like, had on like, just like last month, two people died like over by Bunnell on US-1. That's crazy. And then remember when we were on our way here to do the, it wasn't a fatal crash, but there was like a multi-car wreck. Oh man, wreck like right, on, right around the corner, right there's on, a bad accident. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty much from, Flagler Weekly, we're going to try and post as much content as we can, whether it's like bad accidents, traffic, road blockages, anything. You know, if there's topics of be on the lookout of something, you know what I mean? Or, you know, uh, new businesses that open up. Mm -hmm. um, anybody local that's a creative, that's an artist that's shooting music videos or if they are doing art or poems we're just trying to promote everybody everything flagler and yeah have like a hub of where if you have content you're trying to do Palm yeah. coast does not have the lawyers to beat these type of charges against the state that's what ellie said what do you think about that he's probably what, what, what like the charges that we discussed like these murder charges and whatnot um, like competent like competent who's, lawyers who's that one dude that mike lambert i don't know 
Oh, he's like a big Lambert. He's in Daytona, though, but he does a lot of cases and stuff for people. Um, I don't know about murders, though. Yeah, I feel like there's really not that many lawyers here. Period. Palm Coast. Anyway, and I think it is a good idea, though, to have a lawyer that's familiar with the court system that you're going to be in. Mm. Do you think there's not in enough, like, people, there's not enough people here to pay the amount of money that a murder lawyer would cost. Probably, there's probably not that many cases. I think the majority of the lawyers here aren't even like big criminal lawyers like that. Mm -hmm. Probably more like tax lawyers or mm. estate lawyers, uh, things like that. Yeah, and I believe I saw in that Flagler Live article earlier, but he had a public defender. Mm. You're going to jail, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you have a problem, bro. No, it's true, man. Look, there's like a 96% plea rate. That means 96% of the people who get arrested don't go to trial. You're looking at 10 years. I said, then what they say is like, okay, look, you're charged with XXX. You take this five years right now and you just do the five years, man. You know? But if you take this to trial and lose, you're looking at 20. You got a public defender who has like 30, 40, 50 cases. I don't even know. I know it's a lot. You ain't going to get the kind of representation that you really need to, to get yourself out of that. So it's just better to take the five. I'll tell you the story. There's this one guy. And this was like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Mm hmm <laughs> he's like a, a guy that's been around he's he's been arrested for a lot of things and they offered him like 20 and he was like no and this is what he had a public defender too imagine getting offered 20 yeah like how much you looking you're at? in trouble you are in trouble <laughs> bro but anyway he kept jerking him around and then they ended up giving us like 35 years mm. on plea but here's the thing knowing that 90 so he pled out to 35 yeah. What do you mean by on plea? Damn. Yeah, because he was jerking him around. They're like, quit jerking us around. So it went from 20 to like something else, and he was like, no, 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 no. But he really didn't have a case, and he was guilty anyway. <laughs> Say I work at the district attorney office. I want to get promoted. I want to be head district attorney. I want to be a judge. Mm -hmm. I'm competing against other district attorneys, judges, this, that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they got to pick and choose which cases they're going to take to trial. Mm. They want to plea out. Like you say you have a baseline of 96%. So how are you going to differentiate yourself? That I'm a better prosecutor than you. They're looking at stats of like, oh, I got a 98, 97%. Oh, I have a 97.2. I have a 97.4. So it's like a little amount of number. Mm -hmm. that It's messed up that they turn like people's lives and stuff into like a stat game mm -hmm. for their career. I heard that if like even 10% more people took their cases to trial, that it would shut the entire system down. Wow. Because there's so many cases and they're just used to business as usual. Oh, mm -hmm. you go to first appearance, you go to pretrial, you plea out, you go to sentencing. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. All day long in every county. Wow. So, but taking it to trial, you know, and you gotta, that's risky too. And if you don't have a good lawyer, and you think you're going to take something to trial and you lose? You really want to catch an extra 20 years? Let me ask this. What if I really didn't do it? I feel like I could like be my own lawyer. I feel like you can't be your own lawyer. I just went to, for myself on child support. Because mm -hmm. in court, and this comes back to the interrogation things, mm -hmm. you can't just say what is. You're, you're, you're talking about one thing. Judge, I didn't do this. I was here. I was there. No, this isn't that time to say that, sir. You know, you can't just, you got to know the process. Well, like when I was even trying to like get my case in front of the judge and everything, it's like, mm -hmm. and they won't even tell you anything at the courthouse. We're, like, we're not lawyers. I was like, well, I'm asking you a process question, not a legal question. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the guy was like, oh, yeah, I mean, technically, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I ended up getting it done and I, and I got what I wanted out of my case. By, I got scolded by the judge. And she even said, I'm, you're not, you still have to follow the law, you know? So, and that's just a little casual 
modification of custody, mm. not a murder trial, <laughs> you know? Just I would a, just be like, John, where were you on that day? <laughs> you seen that one guy? I was at Orlando Magic. <laughs> Remember that one guy? Well, then he could have been you. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. But the guy who tried to represent himself, he had like the tall hair. Like He's like, <laughs> this is a travesty. It will not stand. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. He's that like, black dude? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, and if you think I'm going to play with you, then <laughs> yeah. I got not. Yeah, man. That shit was hilarious. He represented himself. You know what? He ain't getting out. He got like 50 years. <laughs> he ain't getting out. He like shot up like his whole family or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. He, what he did was F that, man. They should have sent his ass to jail for that Did you see that one person that was like staring at the judge the whole time? He's like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. The judge you, was like, stop staring at me. Yeah, so I'm about to take you into contempt of court. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but the answer is no. You can't represent yourself. Mm -hmm. And I would say that like, I ideally, yeah. You want, I don't feel like the police generally just arrest people that aren't guilty, though. Sure, there's like the, a small, the stereotype, small corrupt town. We don't mm. like this guy. We're going to slap a case on him. But mm. it's 2023, man. Mm. I think everybody's held pretty accountable. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. But I feel like more likely than not, if you're getting arrested, you probably did that show. You had something to do with it or you know something. I can see that. You know, mm -hmm. but then at the same time, I still feel like, you know, I'm a con constitution mm -hmm. advocate and people's rights advocate. But they ain't just wasting their time just to try to. And I'm not saying every department doesn't, but I, I feel generally no. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're unfortunate if that happens to you and you're in a rare circumstance and in bad shape. Definitely. And you shouldn't defend yourself. <laughs> um, what do you got? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And little Dave, I'm gonna need to ask you for a favor. Um, my phone charger, I believe it's over there, like plugged into the kitchen thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, and, and some other Palm Coast news. You know, the the hospital at the end of Palm Coast Parkway is almost done now. Um, like across from where the old movie theater is. Yeah, next to Saint. It's almost done already. Well. I would say, yeah. I would say they're a couple months out. We've been watching it for, uh, Can I get that phone? for a while now. <laughs> um, but right across the street there, like um, I was reading that they were going to put um, another medical center right there, like right across US-1 at the end of Palm Coast Parkway, which is weird because they just built a hospital. But then uh, they ended up not finalizing the deal because actually uh baptist hospital advent health and uh mm, i i don't know what the other i can't remember it right now but the other big hospital chain around here are all like trying to vying for the land there so there's this this is going to be a hospital there but it's getting pushed back is what it seems like um which is crazy yeah they have a lot of those little advent health outposts and stuff like that no, but this is supposed to be like a full-on hospital like kind of right next to the hospital that they just built i feel like more hospitals are kind of necessary i hate how they're all like backed up mm -hmm. yeah mm. all right what else what else what else about palm coast man like okay so what i got here is <clears throat> topics 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 Uh, this is kind of local and they have something like this in an article that I'm going to also read, but, um, I live in the central Florida. Okay. I'll say I live in the Orlando area. I think that's the first time I've ever said it. I don't really like saying any of that, but I live out there and I live in the, I think it's orange County Seminole or, or orange County district. And they like sent some stuff home with the kids um, at school. And I'm not going to say what school it is, but pretty much saying that they're going to start having like transgender bathrooms. Mm. So if like you feel like a boy, you can go in the boy bathroom. Or if you feel like a girl, you can go in the girl bathroom. Hmm. Now, how I feel about this is I'm not really cool with it just because it's like a, it's kids. You know what I mean? Like, 
you know, under 18. And it, I'm, I get that you feel that way, but I feel like, okay, it's almost like, what if there's like seven girls in there and like you pull out your thing or something like that? You know what I mean? I get it. Mm-hmm. There's like a closed in bathroom, but you're changing locker room, whatever it may be. And I'm not saying you can't do that. Obviously there's personal lockers and everything like that, but I don't think it's appropriate to have like young, I'll call them people with male private body parts in the female bathroom. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And some people may call me like transphobic, but it's like, why do I got to be considered transphobic? Why can't I just like not think it's okay? You know what I mean? Like if I don't really like the harmonica, am I like harmonophobic or something like that? <laughs> like, can I just not like, I that? don't like the phobic term anyway, because it doesn't mean people are, okay. are scared of it. So this is the quick article right here. Divided appeals court rejects protection for transgender bathroom use in St. John's school case. That's the same magazine. Yeah. Well, you said in Orlando they are doing that, though. So, I mean, this is just different, but I'm in the flag or live right now. It says after, and that's also like, that's a blue county. You know what I mean? And we're Palm Coast and St. John's is a red county. Mm. So, but, and it's showing there. Yeah. So I'm showing like the difference in the flagler, which is what we're showing mm-hmm. everything flagler. And then also we're showing the difference between like in Orlando. But um, after a five year legal battle and reversing a lower court ruling, a sharply divided federal appeals court upheld a St. John's County School Board policy that prevented a transgender male student from using boys' bathrooms at a high school. So transgender male is really a girl. Yes. Biologically. Biologically. Yes. And um and I think it's illegal to do the sex change on somebody under eighteen, so mm. it's not I illegal. don't think it is illegal. Damn. I was gonna say so it's almost pretty much like they they are a girl. They're just like dressing as a boy, pretty much. Mm. No, but I mean, they can get on hormones also. You can get a surgery and be on hormones, I'm pretty sure, at under 18 years old. Okay, now this this is getting into a deeper topic because I stand in my statement that I'm offended that you think you could take some hormones and you're a guy. You know what I mean? Just like I can't take some hormones and like, oh, I'm a girl now. It's like I don't, I've never had a period not saying that, or never had a baby, not saying that all women have to have that, but it's, can you put that on vibrate please? Yeah. So, um, it's not that I have to, or they have to, but it's just like, bro, it's so much deeper than just taking some hormones. This is all physical stuff, but there's a lot of emotional stuff that goes on with it. I feel like we can only probably touch on a small, I'm out of this topic because it's very multifactorial mm-hmm. from all different political angles and whatnot. Personally, is it's just taking too far. Like with the kids, no, they're not even thinking about sex at all. That's their parents projecting on them. Mm-hmm. Probably liberal parents. It's been a long time now maybe one in every million kids may have the problems that we're talking about and i don't really want to say problem Mm -hmm. that's not a good choice of words situation that they're dealing with Mm -hmm. identity maybe gender dysphoria whatever you want to call it but it's like a political push to do this and confuse people to further break down society on a, on a liberalist agenda, breaking down homes, breaking them down, making what's not true, true. What's true, not true. And I'm, I'm, I'm not really for it. I don't really believe that. I, but you know, when I hear a word like gender fluid or what do I want to say? There's, there's a levels of masculinity and femininity. Mm-hmm. 
There's some really feminine dudes. That doesn't mean you're a girl. Right. There's some super like tomboyish. Whatever you want to call them, want to like say any like kind of derogatory term mm -hmm. to them. <clears throat> but you know, you're not a dude. Mm -hmm. I recognize that there's these spectrums, you know, like, and I think that's what they kind of try to say, but I feel like they take it a little far. Mm. Like when they're like, I'm a pregnant man. No, you're a manly female mm. who's pregnant. <laughs> you know, you ain't never going to be that. And you'll never be the other. You can pretend and pretend very well and live that life. Mm. And I'm not saying I'm against that. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. It's not really affecting me. I don't like it when they try to force it on someone else, though. Mm. Like, if it's that big of a deal to you, homeschool. I mean, are we supposed to make a thousand Fair. people uncomfortable for one person? Mm -hmm. That just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Like, why? It doesn't. And it's almost like, you know, not... And I'm not against them celebrating more religions at school and stuff like that. But it's like, you know, we can't celebrate every religion at school, you know. Um, that brings me to kind of another topic. What or do you believe in an alpha female? Yeah, heck yeah. Are you having side conversations? No, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I believe in alpha female. Like, like I said, there's spectrums. That's what I was looking for, spectrums. Mm. Yeah, there's some intense, this one, like, my project manager of my company, she's a woman. Mm. If you come at her with some information, you don't know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. she'll eat you alive. Mm. She's a, a alpha woman. So, and this is kind of a reach on that subject a little bit, and this is getting a little bit away from, this is mixing local with the bigger topics, but uh, Gabrielle Union, Mm -hmm. Dwayne Wade's wife just recently said that in her previous marriage, she felt like it was okay for her to cheat on her man because she was paying all the bills in the house. Mm. Now, I've talked to my girl, and those, you know how they say that your, your like, thing has changed, like the story? So, Buddy cheated himself, but she did feel like she was entitled to be the one to cheat because she was paying the bills in the house. So that's what she did. Now, would you consider that alpha female? Like, okay, the woman paying the bills in the house? Uh, I mean, so by that, does it make it okay if like in the normal, I won't say normal, but maybe more average situation where the dude makes more money than uh, the chick, does that give him the right of way to do that? Right. No. I don't think so. But it's like, I, I feel like, I feel like women sometimes are going through what I might call like the Napoleon stage or something. Mm. Cut my headphones down a little bit. Loud as shit. If someone was looking over here, I was trying to signal. Trying to, trying to signal. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> it's like blaring in my ear. <laughs> um, so, Napoleon. Yeah, so pretty much I feel like women, which I understand, but it comes from the aspect of, like, I use this thing where it's like, okay, let's say you're like a drug dealer and you are down you're broke you're broke you're broke it's not working then boom you get it together and now you're getting like a pound five pounds and that's equivalent to women being able to go and work now when you first get that money you're gonna talk some shit to your friends you're gonna like maybe splurge that money a little bit you're you may even like mismanage the money and i'm not saying they're mismanaging the money i think they're doing the complete opposite like, I feel like women really hold on to their money, which is dope, but kind of to be that alpha female, like, a lot of them, I don't feel like do want to pay all the bills and then still be, quote unquote, the woman of the house, which would be a man of the house. It's like, you still got to hold it down. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they kind of do pop their shit a little bit 
when they are like making so you feel like women just now starting to get money though yeah you know and it's like i, I was i don't think it's that i think it's this justification to do what you want to do mm. this this is the same gabrielle union that convinced Wayne wade that his son isn't his son right yeah it is oh it's like his daughter mm -hmm. you know I, I feel like they're a virtue signaling bunch of people i think she's probably a horrible shallow person mm. and, and she'll do and say whatever to be relevant and famous and would make up some bullshit like that to justify fucking a bunch of dudes to not feel bad. But I make the money. Mm. So, but, and I feel like she'll turn around and, and trash some like dude who's got like a wife that doesn't work. Oh, you're not his slave, girl. Mm. You know, he can't do that. So which is it, you know, like, and, and I, I was thinking it's because you're an alpha woman doesn't mean you have to be the head of a household. You could be alpha in other ways. You know, um, like in charge of the bill. Well, most women are the house's CFOs anyway. Mm -hmm. Like most women handle all the bills in a, a marriage. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about gender roles? I feel like they're there, like stereotypes, because they're generally true. Mm -hmm. Like we can get into that whole thing. Like you know, like <clears throat> in Sweden, mm -hmm. is the least gender forced country in the world. That's what every like socialist liberal person wants to point as their example of gender neutral mm. so they let it go and you know what happened majority of women chose women jobs majority of men chose men jobs mm. and this is without any external influence from what they claim from the government or whatever you know like completely you can do what you want to do and they found their role because that's what men see that's what i'm saying about and this liberalism push to, to break down our society is like, let's scramble everything up. This was true is not true, and what's not true is true. Do you see the society getting scrambled up, or do you think yeah, we're going to hold strong? No, it's going down. All the way down? Like, America, they, anyway, because other countries ain't even doing this stupid ass shit. Mm. You know, like, you ever heard of. And other countries prey on us. They talk about like cyber warfare and mm -hmm. Russian propaganda, Chinese propaganda, whatever. Um, they want to break us down because it makes us weak. If the men think they're women, who's going to fight? That's and that's just one little segment of us. There's like so many factors of trying to convince us what's right and what's wrong and the op and it is the opposite i don't care if i have the facts i don't like it and it makes me feel bad so i'm going to argue with you and you're a piece of shit because you don't agree with me so i'm going to cancel you mm. you know you're a horrible person because you don't think what i think and i think that just because it makes me look good <laughs> i look you know i look like a nice person and you're obviously not a nice person because you don't agree with me that's usually what it is yeah and that's how dare you <laughs> um <clears throat> well okay before i get hold on let me uh, hold on we, we glazed over a little bit of stuff mm -hmm. i want to go back to you saying that flagler st john's is red mm -hmm. whereas orlando is blue mm -hmm. now i had wrote this down for a couple of weeks now we really haven't got to it Give what him. if your boy <laughs> andrew one gillum. andrew gillum party boy <laughs> gillum well there's a lot of hold on, but let me let me let me finish pre pre okay. prefacing this. As being a Floridian under the great Ron DeSantis's lead, <laughs> we have enjoyed many freedoms that the rest of the country has stolen from them over the past two years. That's true. How? We what would Florida be like right now if if the blue one? Uh, we would have been shut down for a lot longer. Um, I don't know if that's bad or good. You know what I mean? Um, bad. It's like, see, I feel like people are keep making me be like super honest dickhead John and stuff like that. But it's like, I made the most money I feel like I ever made during the pandemic. Like, I feel like mm. all of my friends. In Florida. 
Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I only live in Florida, but I feel like my friends in other, like New York, they did well. Like all those places during that time, they legalized marijuana. Like shit's pretty dope. Like I feel that, and that's one thing. Like I, I, Ron ain't doing that, but if Gillum was, he would have legalized marijuana. It's marijuana. It's, it's still not federally. Legal. It's still not federally legal. The Democrats had the House and Senate before, and they didn't do it. Anytime they've done it, they haven't made it legal. Okay, it's just like it's starting to listen, be other places. But like that's how, they, like that's how they suck you in. Hold on, let me let me just make this point. That's how they suck you in. Oh, we're gonna cancel student loans. We're gonna do this. You ain't gonna fucking do anything. Like the same thing with codifying the Roe versus Wade. Democrats had many opportunities over the past thirty years plus to do that and they never did because once you solve it you can't keep talking about it i hear you on that so uh, but i'm just you know obviously they're all what ifs but it's like people keep people keep talking about the pandemic and stuff like that when it's like you know RIP to the people that passed away and stuff like that. But like, it was like, whatever, you know, we were home and stuff like that. No, it was good know? to me. It was, I'm not saying that it wasn't good to me. I just see like what kind of economic damage has been in other places. And right now, Florida's booming and Florida's been booming so much so that a lot of people from all these other blue places want to come move down here and jack up our prices. Um, hmm? Yeah. <laughs> um, how do I say this? Mm. It's there. There are a lot of positives that are going on right now, and I'm not saying that Ron Santos isn't like doing a thing or whatever. But hold on, let me put in this quick point. A few minutes ago. You said that you lived in the blue county. Mm -hmm. I moved there from a red county. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, it wasn't a factor. That's like. You said you, what was a factor? I don't think that was a factor in your moving there. You moved there for other reasons, not because, hey, this is a Democratic county, this is a Republican county. Mm, well. But hold on, let me just, let me okay, make this point. Okay. You don't agree with the decision they've made. Decision but you. Made. They are letting the, the transgender bathrooms happen. Whereas over here in red territory. They're kind of like in line well, with... Uh, what I do agree with is their ability to do that, and I have the choice to go there or not. You know what I mean? I don't agree with the fact where it's like, no, you can't do that because it's against the Christian God. It's like, bro, what the fuck? I hear that. Like... I hear that. What the hell y'all got going on? Y'all are like a cult type shit. Like, y'all talk about women over in the Middle East having to cover up their whole bodies... When y'all are controlling like their vaginas and stuff like that, it's like, bro, let people do it. But who's doing that? Are you talking about right wing people? Yeah. They're the ones like Texas, you know what I mean? Who like is the one that outlawed abortion and shit like that. So that's all I'm saying. Like I and back to your question, I move there because they're more liberal. And it's like, mm. you know, I have a job right now to where I don't smoke. But when I first moved to Orlando, I was doing like my own business and stuff like that. And like if I have some trees on me, like, okay, one time I got pulled over in Orlando with like a little bit. And the cops were just like, we don't care about this. We're looking for like guns or like. Same St. Saint, Saint Pete too, which is definitely liberal. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like all these big cities <clears throat> are a little bit more lax on stuff like that. That's why I moved there. It's like these red uh, areas. They're very rural and they really have nothing, uh, but like they're so strict. It's like, oh, this eighth, not in my town. It's like, yeah, bro, I feel chill. that. You, you know, know I, mean? I want to like kind of like um, re, re clarify my position. <laughs> First of all, I'm not like another water, please. Uh, some hardcore red person. You know what I mean? I like, like you know me. Um, I, I'm not like a super conservative type super guy. Right wing. Well, where would you consider yourself on the? I would say more of like a libertarian, 
where like you just kind of mind your own business you know see but that's it gets twisted too now because like you say like democrat is one thing but leftists is another thing but leftists are in the democrats so it's like i hate when people assume like i'm like this conservative right wing type person because of how i look first of all mm. which the other side i want to say the other side because i'm not on the other side of that but you know like when people play the whole identity politics thing this and that mm -hmm. and then it boxes me in this area because i don't agree with all that people should be able to do what they want to do and people don't need this hardcore right wing control either mm -hmm. but at the same time and i'm gonna tell you another thing too not that i'm like some super christian or something like that mm -hmm. But I feel like that liberalism is like an evil thing. Not Democrat. The Democrats are infiltrated by this liberalism, which is like godless, self-justified. How do what makes me feel good? And that's just not responsible. And I don't feel like a good way to really operate as society. But at the same time, I don't want to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if if you're a woman, do what you want to do. Have an abortion. Like, we've all been there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's like... I've never been there before. <laughs> Just for clarity. <laughs> I'm proud of you, John. <laughs> I, I was generally speaking. Me either. <laughs> um, so, now, okay right now but hold on can i make one more before we move on this last point mm -hmm. i feel like gillum would have self-served mm -hmm. for himself and for democratic party which is not the american party it's the democratic party because they is care the more Republican about party the american party <sighs> good question i'm just i'm just trying to i don't know john it's, a, it's such a hard question because if I had to answer the question, I'd be like, you know what, F both of them. Mm -hmm. But but I just feel like there's like this this Republicans are a little bit more. I can honestly say I feel like the Republican the Republican of today, John, they accept more people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like the liberal of today, like, oh, you don't even want to hear what I say because I'm a white dude, and you assume that I'm like from the suburbs with a white family that's been perfect and i don't know mm. jack shit about nothing so mm. what do i know about it mm. when in actuality mm, i mean you know me mm -hmm. i mean i'm not tucker carlson <laughs> you know what i mean i'm like i feel that i'm like some like from the bottom white dude like it's just different it's different so i just don't if i have to pick a side you know, here's the thing, and I said this to you a couple years ago. I was like, man, I wish I could vote for more Democratic people. But I can't. You got to like, spank them <laughs> by not voting, you know what I mean? And, and let them regroup and come back and hit, say, hey, you know what? We are for the people. Because you know what I mean? That's, that's what I said about Trump. And I'm not for Trump. I like Trump. Mm. Because he was ruffling feathers. And, and sure, he was probably serving some of his own interests, but in comparison to the networks that were already established in place, you know, the swamp mm -hmm. is nothing. Hmm. So, but look at like, when you look at like Portland and stuff like that, we're like, remember we were talking about it last week with them just giving out drugs, giving out needles, giving out this, giving out that. Oh, you can have nine month abortions. Now, that's effed up. You can just deliver that kid and we'll kill him right there. You can just go home. Like that's too far. But you know, I feel like, in honesty, extremists on both sides probably make a happy medium. Extremists on both sides probably make a happy medium. That sounds like a good statement. That is a good statement. Mm -hmm. Because you got nut jobs on both sides, people that are unreasonable on both sides. I feel like I'm still the same person, but like the Democratic side has moved too far left, and the Republican side moved left too. Mm. And they've moved into my zone of leftness, whereas now the the Democrats are just way over there and like kind of like self justification, self serving neo neoliberals, just using America as a conduit to have corporate profits. 
And that's what it is. That's real. Um, okay. So I think, like you said, we didn't have much local topics, really. But I think we did a pretty good job. We've been on here for an hour and a half already. Damn, really? That's what it says. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, we started at around 8. It's 9.30 right now. All right, let's do a quick podcast recap. What do you mean podcast recap? Well, you know, like, let's talk about it. <laughs> you lead. I, I feel you. like we got off to a good jump. As things started flowing pretty naturally. Mm -hmm. I feel like this has been good so far. Yeah. So it was a little technical hiccups, which, you know, that's kind of, that's the, a be, that's the bean steamer of mine. <laughs> We're at so five. <laughs> yeah. Um, but all in all, pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like we've done an okay job of the correlated topics that we have, kind of, kind of grouping them up and talking about them. It's, it's really kind of hard to like stick to, to one, one thing yeah, yeah. especially because we want to have conversation just flows we want to have we don't want to be so rigid that we can't just flow because mm -hmm. i remember when we were thinking of doing this it was like a lot of times it'll be me and baby on one speakerphone when me and him are riding somewhere mm -hmm. and talking to you on the phone and us like i don't want to say arguing mm -hmm. but and a lot of things we feel differently yeah mm -hmm. and it would be hilarious yeah <laughs> so we're like man we this will be hilarious. It'll be the fly on the wall in our conversations. Definitely. So we're just trying to get to that natural state is where I would really. And then again, it's only the fifth time. Mm -hmm. So we'll get there. And like, and the numbers are, are doing okay from where you yeah, know. Yeah, I was literally there. just thinking about the numbers, and I was mm -hmm. like, man, one crazy thing that is happening though is like our numbers are exponentially going fast. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like. Because I feel like our foot is on the gas, maybe like 60%. Mm -hmm. But once we really like posting every day, me and you, like we're going to have like 10,000 impressions every 30 days type yeah. thing. You know what I mean? And, and, it, and, it, and it's several things too, because it's like the content. Yeah. And it's the distribution of content. Mm -hmm. And then the flow of traffic mm -hmm. to where we want it to go. And we're, and we're, it's really harder for us too, because we are trying to do two different things, like with the podcast as a, Mm -hmm. a nationwide entity and then flagler weekly, weekly as his mm -hmm. own thing because mm -hmm. that is his own thing and this is on flagler weekly this podcast but this podcast isn't the basis of flagler weekly this mm -hmm. is just like a little bonus like mm -hmm. when we start doing the other things just for you know more content right. for flagler county just mm -hmm. i mean we've been here a long time mm -hmm. it's changing yeah and we want you know there's there needs to be a a, a place where everything's at i definitely and agree. that's what we're gonna be and it's not happening here. It's happening a lot of other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited about the calling show that we're gonna that we're gonna have too. I'm excited. I really want to hear like, because you know we come in contact to who we come in contact with, and we think what we think mm -hmm. based on that. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to like have a talk with someone who you don't come in contact with, a totally different point of view. And have them come on here and talk about it. Some people aren't going to be from Palm Coast. Some people are going to be, I don't like this place. And then, oh, this place has changed so much. Like, I want to hear all that. I want to I hear the old people yell about it. And other things, too. Um, see, we're getting off topic again. Uh, <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> um, so, ah. this, this is a funny topic. Um, we wanted to look up the DEA drug names. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to do that right now on my phone. And I don't know if you want to look it up on your phone too, Dave. Uh, oh. DEA. Who are you talking to? I know them, I know them drug names, John. Hilarious. <laughs> but we were we were uh, talking about the name for boy. And oh. I thought boy was crack. Mm. And you said boy is actually heroin. Yeah, well, we got to go back a few episodes. Like when I was, was telling you when I lived in Tampa and I'm walking down the street and people are like, boy, because I, I, my exact words were there's prostitutes walking around and people are yelling, boy, boy, boy. And he thought I was saying that the prostitutes are like, hey, he boy, in, hey, boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I was like, nah, mm -hmm. that boy is heroin. You yeah. know what I mean? They're letting you know what they got. <laughs> hey, got that boy, boy. <laughs> So I decided to look up some funny, some terms. Bro, Bro that's what I'm looking at right now. It's crazy. So I'm going to go through a couple crack cocaines. Uh, Applejack. Baby T. Bass. Bazooka. <laughs> Beam me up. <laughs> uh, bass. Uh, uh, I'm going to say ones that I've heard of when you say them. Okay. Uh, 
Black Rock. <laughs> you talking about you talking about crack right now? Crack cocaine. Yeah. Black Rock. Um, blow cane. <laughs> uh, that Bobo. Nope. <laughs> that Bone Crusher. Uh, I heard bass. <laughs> Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, crack cocaine. They got boy on here. That's that's not accurate. <laughs> How about hard? Let's see. They got hard. Mm, rock. That's, that's an easy one. Hold on. Ooh, they got ready rock. That's, um, that's that Rick Ross term. Ooh, they they got they go hamburger helper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, hold on. Let's, okay, DEA, let's get real. You trying to get your agent murdered? Hey, yeah, uh, I'm just looking for a hamburger helper. You know what I mean, buddy? No, I'm not a cop. I swear. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> that hamburger helper. I read the DA handbook too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Um, fentanyl. Here we go. Ooh, toe tag dope. Is that's that, the name for. That was true. That's the name for fentanyl. It is. Um, gray stuff. Mm, we're selling that fentanyl though. Mm. Um. Oh my God! They call it Facebook. That's fentanyl mixed with heroin and pill form. It's called Facebook. I don't think anybody sells it like that though. Because I think uh, when we were at my sister's like um, birthday dinner like last year or the year before, mm -hmm. the the guy um, he was like on the, on the narcotics team and, and at the sheriff's department, and uh, we we're like, "What's the deal with people like cutting these drugs with fentanyl? Like drugs don't even make sense because like mm -hmm. cocaine is like an upper." And he was saying that like. Yeah, like all this stuff that we're busting people with, even like coke and stuff is is testing positive for fentanyl. Mm. So I don't understand that. And I know people actually press their own pills made out of fentanyl, but they're selling them as pills. It's like, hey, let me buy these fake these fake uptowns that are uptowns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking for the fake uptowns, please. <laughs> so I heard that like, you it's cheap. You can get a brick of fentanyl for cheap, mm. and like where if you have some bad dope like if you don't cut it well and it's not it doesn't have an actual a lot of coke in there um i'm not trying to get too detailed but i am going to get detailed for the people at home so let's say it's 100 percent cocaine you might have someone mixing like 20 30 percent to you say no no um i would say that if you got a really good plug you might score upper 90 percent 90 percent 94 percent yeah mm. um you could take that and cut it straight up in half with incense baby laxative whatever mm -hmm. now you're at like 40 percent well yeah i was being you're generous, about 40 percent or less down to like some if you have some stepped on stuff might be 20 percent mm -hmm. but you know decent right sniffing so product stuff where you, you 35 may, 40 if you didn't have the fentanyl in it it might be like this isn't coke you know what i mean like i'm not even getting high or anything here's the thing though fentanyl is way cheap but when you sniff coke you sniff a line is a lot you say you're doing 100 milligrams you know because you get a gram i would say probably even less you say you cut the gram up one gram into 20 lines how many what's in the line I mean, you just, just estimate like a line, you know? Well, when you said 100 milligrams. Well, I'm saying one gram of cocaine is how many is a milligrams? thousand milligrams. Okay. A thousand so milligrams then, is one gram. So then I'll get you 10 lines. Well, whatever. I mean, it depends on how you're doing. But let's say on average, like you're just regular, you get 20 lines out of that. Mm -hmm. I'm just estimating. Mm -hmm. So that means each line is what? 50 milligrams of cocaine. Mm -hmm. 50 milligrams of cocaine isn't going to kill you. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when you're sniffing a line that's... Point two, point one. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fentanyl. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. Like, why would you mix a little bit with something that's a lot to get more weight? It doesn't make sense to me. Right. I mean, that's it doesn't make sense. Dying. It's what I'm saying. It does, and it doesn't make sense to even use that. And it's the opposite product. Mm -hmm. People are trying to sprinkle it and trying to get that kick. Because out of I don't it. think they really even know drugs like that. I think these they are don't. like stupid people who are just like, oh, this this gonna get them fucked up. Mm -hmm. And they're playing doctor and playing chemist and shit like exactly. that. Exactly. It's wild. And that's even worse what you said, talking about the face, what you call it, Facebook? Uh, yeah, that's the, 
heroin in pill form laced with fentanyl. Call that See, Facebook. And the person that bought that mm-hmm. is probably not calling it that Facebook. They're probably like trying to buy a Roxy, which is, you know, Roxy Codone, 30 milligram. Mm. But really, it's not even that. You're getting some, some fentanyl that someone made at their house in a little t- pill tray. <laughs> let, let me read off a couple heroin mm. names real quick. Uh, that doji. Mm. Uh, that menthol. That horse. That uh, horse, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's from, that's, I, remember, I think I remember that from like Dare in like third grade. <laughs> <laughs> that that Harry. Um, that mujer. Is that girl? That what? Mujer. That's Spanish. M-U-J-E-R. Is that? Mujer. Yeah, mm. that's like woman. Sounds like a glorious hangar. Pants. Pants. <laughs> um, P-Funk. Hold on, could I just take a second here? Yeah. DEA. <laughs> here, here's the, the crack ones. I'm done. Now, and also, now I'm, I'm like, you know, 20 years removed, <laughs> FYI. Mm-hmm. Crack. Crack rock. Bass. Mm-hmm. Cook up. Mm-hmm. Uh, butter. Cookie. Well, I think that's more of like a, a sell, seller term. Oh, like, oh I, my bad. I, I, I cooked a little cookie, boy. <laughs> <laughs> like um, H, a piece. I heard you like, yo, let me get a piece. Let me get a piece. Mm-hmm. Let me get, let me get a chip of that Irish spring. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, and then like heroin. I would say like heroin H. Is Angel Dust heroin? No, Angel Dust is PCP. Mm. Um, that brown. I think brown could be for heroin. Mm, China white. That's a kind of that's a kind of heroin, and there's also black tar heroin. Mm, uh, Blue magic. That's just a brand of heroin. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was China white. <laughs> um, what are names? Look, I don't give a damn. You call that pink magic or whatever. Don't sell this my product. <laughs> Heron. That Ron. Remember he said that Ron. I'm gonna get that as a. Hey, story. you know what this shit? You you seen Captain Ron the movie? Have I seen Captain Ron? Yeah, anyway, I want to I want to introduce induct that as a new name that, that Captain Ron. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <clears throat> have I shown you the new uh the new sounds that I got? Mm-mm. Oh man, hold on. I I haven't put them in the system yet, so mm. I'm just going to play them off the laptop, but I want to see if they're going to make the mark. Let's see. Oh, hey, you know what? Now that we're talking, we were talking about some drugs here or whatever, um, and this is kind of an old story. We haven't talked about it. And I don't mean like years old, like a couple of weeks. Um, that you know, back in the '90s, Joe Biden and them, and an attempt to to break down. This is conspiracy theory talk, <laughs> you know, but not really. You know, putting crack in black neighborhoods and giving them all chunky sentences. You know. That's yeah. what happened. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Biden, mm-hmm. Hillary and them. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's, let's call these people super predators. Start giving them 60 times the sentence because you got crack instead of cocaine. Even though the environment that we created is conducive to you to sell crack, not cocaine. That law has been like reversed. So now in an effort to take down this racial disparity in sentencing Mm -hmm. because you know stereotypically and i don't even think this is true but i would say that because you know just more white people or whatever they smoke crack too you know i mean they're just not getting busted for the sales like at the same rate that that black people are right and that's because they're in the neighborhood and however has been set up to get them more of that product Mm -hmm. so now you get the same charge as if you were just selling coke Wow. So this goes back to all of what I was saying earlier, too. Like, let's say you were just walking around in the hood. You know where to grab 20 pieces mm-hmm. that are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Some white dude pulls up. Oh, I'm looking for a 40 rock. Okay. I'll, I'll just I'll make $20 real fast. Mm-hmm. I can walk to that house and walk right here. Mm-hmm. That's undercover. Now you snatch that, that kid up, sell him, you know, charge him with sales of crack cocaine. Let's give him 10 years on his first sale. And he may not necessarily even like be a dealer like that. Mm-hmm. He's just middleman real quick. 
I would call him a victim of circumstance. You know what I mean? Like, mm. so I think that, I think that is good that they brought down that sentencing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's good how they didn't retroactive it, activate it. So you know, if you've been in prison already for ten years on possession of crack or or sales of crack, mm -hmm. where you might have already been out now, if that new law applied to you, and they're not retroing it, so people are still in jail for that. Mm. That could be out if they would retro retroactivate that. That's crazy. Here, I'm going to uh, play one of the first sounds for you right now real quick. <clears throat> Do you have the bounce check? Wow, wow. One. <laughs> So that's the. I told you, you gotta let the dogs bark. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. Shorty can't eat no books. <laughs> I can't wait to put these in the sun. Cause um, and I hope they can hear it on the on the Facebook Live. But that was uh, DMX from Belly. Rest in peace, DMX. That's crazy. He's dead. Mm -hmm. But um, he's been like, here we go again. Nas is talking about all this enlightening, moving to Africa bullshit. Yeah. He ain't trying to hear that shit. You know, I don't even smoke trees no more, brother. I don't need it. <laughs> Yo, you didn't even see the red light right there, man? <laughs> hey, man. Fuck that red light. They can't see me. I'm, run, I'm out here moving pounds, running lights. Shit. All right. <laughs> Here's the second sound that I'm about to add to the uh, soundboard. Mm. I thought that was pretty funny. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so. Or oh, you could. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Here's a thing. Okay, please slip the frame rate. It doesn't let us slip the frame rate, guys. Anyways. Oh, you know what you wanted to mention? What? I don't know if we should talk about it this time. <laughs> about certain uh, newspapers' liberal bias, like in the way they write stuff. We could talk about it. Eh. Um, I feel like that's going to be a lot, though, maybe. Well, basically, all we have to say is that we feel like Flagler Live is very left-leaning, democratic. The head guy, Tristan, whatever his name is, Pierre Tristan. Mm -hmm, Pierre. Oh, Pierre, I'd like to interview him. Oh, you know who I want to interview? Who? Buddy from St. Augustine who grilled a million steaks. Oh, my God. And got $5,000. Oh so I did the math. <laughs> and not saying he made this per steak because obviously he gets paid by the hour. But I'm talking about the bonus. So let's say he made a million steaks. Let's say they made a dollar profit off each steak. That's a million dollars. You gave him $5,000? He made point zero zero five. He made five hundredths of a cent on each steak that he flipped, and then they're making like a dollar on each steak. Yeah, do you think they make? I think they probably make more than a dollar. I mean, I'm lowballing. I would Let's, say they probably profit a couple bucks. How if, much is a steak at Long Island? Like thirty dollars, the whole meal? Up to because the potato and the whatever. Yeah, that's nothing. You know what I mean? So let's even say. <clears throat> So how much does the actual steak itself cost? Like ten dollars? Yeah, but when you if you want to count like profit and operational cost as well, I would say it's still more than, than two dollars to make it out of a steak. Total profit. Can you look up how much does Longhorn profit off of a steak? But you know what my whole point of the thing was hmm. is regardless of that, I saw the article, you saw the article, thousands of other people saw the article. That's free advertisement for them. You know, like mm. these days, it's all about you got to, you know, people don't watch TV like they used to. People don't read the newspaper like they used to. You just can't say, I'm taking out an ad in this. The way that information is shared is different now. You know, and, and my perspective is they give this fucking guy five grand f for working there for 25 years and cooking a million steaks, bro. A at million give, steaks. At least give me a grand for each year I've been here or something like that. And, and don't even worry about the five cent for each steak like just how much free advertising did they get mm -hmm. from people sharing it it's a feel good story mm -hmm. more than five grand like five grand do you think that's why people were sharing it though because it was a feel no good story? that's a great marketing ploy because it does feel good oh look this guy did this he was there but i think a lot of people are sharing it because it's bullshit 
You think so? And no offense to that guy, but it's like a lot of people are like, bro, are you kidding me? Like you give your whole life to these companies and they you five. Mm. See, that's how I felt. But I was assuming people like were looking at it like in a positive light. Think about it. I feel like for this to be a thing, think about just think about that. They actually have a gold jacket for somebody to get a million stakes. How often does someone work there for 25 years? Like, how long have they been in the article? Nothing? Look around how long Longhorn has been around. It's been for a minute. I've been, I went there at least 20 years ago myself for the first time, probably more than that. But I think in the article it says there's only like eight people or, or maybe six or eight, I can't exactly remember, I have, have yeah. done that. Give that man 50 grand. And especially the way like you're getting the free advertising is kicking up business is you it's not just a percentage off the stake that's not the only value you're getting mm -hmm. by promoting that and making a spectacle of the fucking guy and it's a write-off i bet exactly that too like come on man do you got anything for us there's nothing like specifically about stakes it's just like how much like a steakhouse would make how not, much? they don't go like specific into like a dish but just like how much the steakhouse would make off of a steak well no not just like off of being open i don't think they have like specific food statistics let's see restaurant profit from steak let's see Hey, you guys want to talk about something else with no statistics? Okay. While you, oh, no, you got I it. Found it. Okay. How much markup is in steak? Steakhouse markups are outrageous. Mm. Typically, a steakhouse buys the meat for roughly 30% of the price a customer spends on a steak. Damn. It implies that the restaurant paid less than $17 for the beef if you paid $55 for a nice steak. So that's at like a high end spot. So maybe like. I think it's still the same thing at like a Longhorn. It may cost 30 for a steak, but they got it for like 10, $12. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that'd be around 30%. I mean, that's still a pretty high cost for them though. All I'm saying is, okay, so that means let's even do some simple math. Let's say they got it for $10 and it's selling for $30. That's $20 off each steak. So they made $20 million and gave him $5,000 mm. and just him. And got free advertising too. And yeah, and they admitted that they were like, oh, he's done a million stakes. Like, why would you even say that? See, I want to interview him and be like, would he be like, yeah, you know, I just kept plugging away. I'm, I'm happy about it. Or would Bro, he be like, five years? What am I supposed to do? Or would he be like, man, fuck them? Like, it's like that's what I want to talk to him about. At restaurants, do you get like benefits? Like, does he have health benefits as a chef, Eleanor? <sighs> probably, probably. I don't know what kind wanna, of plan they got or offer their people. I don't know. I don't know that business. But I'd imagine. You think Kyle will answer if I called him right now? Try him. I'm going to call him and then see because he was a chef. I would think that it's a law they drafted after their your employees insurance. I think Kyle's a great person. Did, did he work at that In store? In fact, I'm pretty sure that's a law, John. Did Kyle, no, Kyle worked at the Daytona store, I think. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. You, what, you think it's a law that what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that if you have, you have a, a business, you have to offer health insurance. Even at restaurants? That's still a restaurant. No, maybe. I mean, now being a waiter is different than being like the kitchen member. Let's see if Kyle will answer. My brother. Uh oh, snap coming through. He's probably he's probably waiting tables right now of fresh flip steaks. You know, I heard that there's like crazy high markup on sushi too. Like my my uh, mom used to like manage this place, and uh, she said the markup was ridiculous on, on what they charge. Please leave your message for. You should leave him a hilarious message on air. <laughs> <laughs> my boy Kyle, man. Kyle, you. First of uh, all, Kyle, how can we ain't watch another show? Mm -hmm. It will be my first comment. Second of all, Kyle, pick a damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's crazy. Um, I'm going to look up real quick to see, does Longhorn give employees health insurance? Well, why are you looking that up? You, you look it up for me, little Dave? Yeah. You know, we spoke about a few, like, 
subversive topics um and i feel like we have like not a very politically correct view or response to those things that we said mm -hmm. so that brings me to the point of this andrew tate dude who just and, got arrested yeah and another great topic but going to that yeah one of the, the topic i'm gonna get into with that is should you stay married for the kids mm. but go into okay. andrew tate tate so i would assume that you assume that he's wasn't guilty right but he's already gotten out and i don't think he was charged it's kind of you know what he has to do 30 days i heard they let his brother out i thought both of them got out i don't think so because they because they he's like this is war against the matrix i like how he calls the system the matrix <laughs> like he's like thinks he's like neo in the matrix mm -hmm. but you know this is kind of old news because i think that he did get out and they didn't actually charge him um, um now that i'm thinking about it and talking about it but i think it's kind of effed up and you know i'm a kanye sympathizer as well that he's going up against those same that these same powerful types of people when he's talking shit that they don't like man and they, they gotta spank him because he even called it himself. He's like, you know, first you try to get canceled, then they try to arrest you, then you still don't shut up, then you get murdered. Do you agree with that? Probably. Do you think he's somebody that could happen to? I, I think he's very influential, yes. Uh, for And I think the group of people that he's um, influenced over is, is a powerful group of people. It's not old ladies. It's all, you know, 20 to 30 something year old men that can really buck if he got him riled up and he really mm -hmm. got his shit together enough. Okay, what is there? For Longhorn, they can get up to a 25% discount on just like food and like drinks and whatnot. As Ooh. far as like health benefits, they can get the paternity leave, paid holidays, PTO. No they, insurance? They have, an, they have a vacation policy some unique benefits in categories such as office perks and health and wellness i'm gonna click on this i mean health and wellness isn't necessarily insurance look we long horse stakeouts benefits include dental insurance life Ooh. insurance right, 401k right. retirement planning along mm. with eight other what the fuck eight other <laughs> unique benefits in categories such as paid time off and health and wellness more they less. they get ranked as 63 out of 100 by whoever this is. Ooh. That's not good. That's not bad, though. At least they got something. You know, I, I wonder if it's like, you know, like at like Publix, if you keep working there, like after a certain amount of time, you start getting like stock in Publix. Yeah. So even though you might just be like a cashier or something like that, if you're there for 25 years, you might you might be it's sitting on some hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and Publix is only growing. I mean, mm -hmm. in Florida anyway, that's the best the grocery store. Is going up it's, where are you going to go? Win Dixie? Yeah, you can get employee <laughs> stock purchase plan, mm. 401k slash retirement, tuition reimbursement. Those are like some of their financial benefits. Mm. They they also have dental, vision, health, life. That's about it. That's pretty good. That's good. It's good for a more medial job, but you know, I'm sure the higher the higher you go up in the company, you probably... You know, five years my boy been putting away 401k he could be sitting on some straight five grand still come on bro. i just feel like his insult is a gift and yeah. especially how it's paraded around and got more than five grand with the free advertisement i feel like if i've been there 25 years if y'all max out you're matching at like five percent you should give me like ten percent yeah but at the same time screw you man you just work here <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy uh, so, so but what what how, the andrew tate thing yeah um <clears throat> well, yeah, what I think about that, it's not that I think he's guilty or not. Like, what I do believe is he, I think he's dealing with some, like, Eastern European mob-esque type shit. I think it's easy to kind of break the law when you're, like, rich and you're dealing with some, like, females or maybe paying them to do this or that or this or that. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like, let's say... Your boy's like, yo, I got some girls that are down to do some shit, you know? It's it's almost like a drug deal. Or, yeah, a drug deal. Like, let's say you buy some crack and then you get pulled over. You are going to get arrested, too. You're like, I don't sell and distribute crack. Yeah, but you bought it. You know what I mean? So, like, if he buys females, yeah, maybe he didn't actually do the kidnapping and stuff. But he's still a part of that whole ring or whatever. 
And so that's what I believe about that. Hmm. But um, what do you believe about it? You, do you believe the conspiracy that they're just trying to get him, shut him up and stuff like that? Yeah, I do believe that. Why? What is he saying? I feel like so he's like influential, man. Influential of what, though? I Against, feel like he's saying just what people already think. But he says what's normal. And the people that don't like him want to promote the opposite, like we talked about earlier, to make you believe what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Like, uh, on, a, on a bigger scale. So, let me ask you this. Do you feel like he... <clears throat> so, the people, they might be like, hey, we got to get this guy out of here because we're trying to make the men more feminine and he's making them more masculine. That's yes. what you're saying? Yes. Because the popular liberal idea is that you shouldn't be as masculine. You know, we heard the, talk, the term toxic masculinity. Yeah. He's the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. He's the opposite Wait, of... no, he is he, toxic masculinity. Allegedly. He, he's opposite. He's against women being ridiculous and self-justified in anything that they feel like they want to do. Mm. I feel like he, he's just... He, he says what's true. If he was been saying this stuff 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. he'd be like, duh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? But now it's, it's crazy because you're like, you try to paint it out. It's like you're thinking so like ridiculous. So I want to see how that goes into my other topic of... So we were having this conversation and it's like, let's say if there's kids in a household and you're married... So, and you have kids, do you think it's better to stay with them and, and be kind of a toxic situation and like the parents fighting and stuff in front of the kids? Or do you think it's better to split up even at like a young age or like let's say like five years old or something like that? I, I say once things go a certain way, there's no coming back. You think so? Yeah, I do think so. How, where's the line at? Obviously, cheating is a certain way, but like, can it be before that? Okay, but even like, okay, say your 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 girl cheats on you, or you cheat on your girl, mm -hmm. and you guys are like, oh, we're, I'm gonna work it out. Let's work it out. Mm -hmm. It'll be okay. Mm -hmm. The one who cheated is like, cool. Let's move forward. Mm -hmm. That other one, no, they, know. they ain't letting that go, and now they don't trust you. Mm -hmm. And now they're never gonna trust you because mm -hmm. you lied. Mm -hmm. And then it, it could work out, maybe. Mm -hmm. Unlikely. Mm -hmm. Now every time you talk, you can't even get along because now this is wrong. This is wrong. I have this resentment. You have this resentment. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a deep hole of stuff that's messed up. And it ain't going to get right. And also, too, both parties have to be willing to change as people, grow up, act differently. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of the times, both people aren't going to do that because you think that you're right. Why should I do that? You're the one who's wrong here. Mm -hmm. You do that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, while the whole time you're going back and forth, back and forth, like your kid's seeing this. Oh, my parents lie. Oh, this is how you manipulate. This is what my dad says to my mom to break her down. Mm. Oh, I'm learning manipulation <clears throat> techniques in real time. Mm. That's not good. You know, that's, I don't feel like that's good. Or even that, like, yelling is the answer. Yeah, yeah, getting mad, yelling, hey, let's get angry, let's mm -hmm. insult. Mm -hmm. Let's not let's not talk about it because mm -hmm. they're not going to work that because they don't have any type of healthy dialogue at all. Mm. So you're just only teaching bad things. So now the other option is splitting up, not being in the household with them on, like, a 24-hour basis or mm. whatever you want to call it. And that that still hurts, but it's not as bad as the other one you say. I've heard before that it's better to come from a broken home than to live in a broken home. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like if they would get the courts a little more fair mm -hmm. and actually do like a real fifty-fifty split, because mm -hmm. right now the women have all the cards. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't leave me, and women are possessive. And if you do, you're going on child support. You're going on alimony. And the man's like, "Oh, I can't even do that." You know what I mean, like. Whereas if they actually would just split apart, start living their own lives, maybe they would realize that they don't like that. Then maybe they realize that, hey, you know what? I do want to be with this person. Mm -hmm. I feel like there needs to be a break. 
and not like, oh, we only talk a little bit now. No, nothing. Mm. And then you re meet again later, which is unlikely. What do you think about, like, say, if you've been like dating someone for five years, like, are you the same person? I would say that's another thing, too. And it depends on what age that started. Mm. You know, like, if you met somebody when you say, like, okay, like, say even me. Mm-hmm. Like, I meet somebody, I'm 18, she's 17. Mm-hmm. Fast forward 10 years. Mm-hmm. I've done graduated college a few times. Mm-hmm. You're not doing anything. I've, our lives have just went in two different directions. Mm. People got to stay on the same track. You can't be going one way and another way and think that you're still next to each other. That makes sense. Y'all met. It's like we met each other here, but that doesn't yeah. mean we have to. And I, I've went up here. You've mm. stayed down here. Mm. That's why, like, CEOs don't. Well, I won't say that. Like, they might mess around with, but, like, a CEO of a company is not going to have a serious girlfriend that's a hostess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? A, a cashier at Winn Dixie. Mm-hmm. Another thing, a, a guy who's a busboy ain't going to have a successful mm-hmm. business owner. Or, or whatever, it. like you have nothing in common mm-hmm. other than you've known each other for a long time. Mm-hmm. Let it go. That's what, I, that's what I would say. And that, that's true. Um, anyway, how long have we been on? Two hours and eight minutes. Oh, I think we should. What you say? You think we should cut it soon? I think so. Yeah, we should wrap up. Um, l- let's run through a couple quick topics towards the end. You know what I mean? Let, let's stay out for about like fifteen more minutes. Okay. Um, but what I will say about this subject is I'm I'm the type of person like come back together and stuff like it doesn't always have to be a bad situation. Um, <clears throat> okay, what do you think about moving in together before like getting married? It's funny you said that. I just saw a thing today when they were saying that statistically, eighty percent of people that do that end up getting divorced much sooner than people who get married. Mm-hmm. And do all that afterwards to yeah. tend to stick together more. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like it'd be true, but I mean, if the statistics say that, but, I think it's important to. Well, I don't know. But I wouldn't I, say to but, move in together, but I think it's important for both people to be able to like. I want to come over and see if you're messy. I want to see if you do the dishes. I want to see if you take the trash out. I think the personality traits of someone that would stay together mm-hmm. are more just in line with the same person that would wait to do all that and do it at the same time mm. so from jump street you're already kind of on the same compatibility level of mm-hmm. your your morals and the type of person you are mm. because say one person is like no let's get married now and she's like no let's wait and you're pressuring her that's already like mm-hmm. you're already not in line from the get and it's probably only going to get further offline and I, apparently the statistics back that up <laughs> okay um <laughs> Let me go through a couple other things. Um, Okay, we had a topic about majority of CDL drivers now are Mm. black people and women now. Mm. What do you think that is? I, I personally think it's that they, it's, I think the information has kind of gotten out about the pros and cons of being in a truck to where before that information might not have been out there. But I almost feel like they're starting to like dominate that class. And the thing is, population wise, there is more white people. So how come they're not like driving trucks? W- would you say you agree majority of truck drivers are either black or women? Well, at the place where my company holds our classes at Mm -hmm. um there's a cdl training area there like Mm -hmm. in one of the you know the ballrooms or whatever that you can rent out Mm -hmm. and yeah i would say it's like rednecky type white dudes Mm -hmm. women but primarily like black dudes and some like kind of black women too Mm -hmm. and um i think the course might have gotten cheaper now that they need more drivers and stuff like that you can like a lot of a lot of companies are paying for people to get their license now do you think that's good or bad i mean i mean 
I'm not going to say it's like a bad thing, not based off color or anything. I just, I'm wondering about the trend. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, where did this, is it just me that's noticing it? And then it's like, I guess. How did you notice it though? I mean, well, me being a truck driver mm. and I've had my CDL for 10 years. When I went there, I was in a class with like 10 people and I was the only black person there. Damn. Yeah, but like a lot of my friends have started getting their CDL and I'm looking at a lot of people who are buying trucks and doing this and maybe it's just my demographic, but I just see a lot of people who are like black starting to become truck drivers and stuff. And mm. I didn't, I was just wondering if we might have, if you might have seen the same trend as I did, if you might have had a reason for it. But um, Craig, <clears throat> so now, well, this, oh, go ahead. Well, I'll just say it real quick. I, I, mean, I really don't know the cause of that. Um, I think it's good. I mean, that's a decent job. If it sticks around, I mean, with all this, you know, eventually they're going to come out with the uh, AI trucks and whatnot, but mm. why not? I mean, that's a, a relatively easy thing that you can make decent money with. So, I mean, I mm. think it's good that they're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of dangerous, though, but yeah. And then also those automated trucks are coming around, so mm -hmm. I don't worry about that. But, um, okay, this is the last topic that I think we may or may not leave off on but um like i said i'm trying to eat healthier and stuff like that um so mm -hmm. we we're talking about what should john do for lunch at work if i'm not gonna be buying food anymore so today i had the grilled chicken mm -hmm. and i put a little barbecue sauce and hot sauce on there and then i had some spinach now i had ranch dressing with it mm -hmm. um i heard that's bad but you were talking to me about meat grease actually being worse than vegetable or being better than vegetable grease. So can you break down what do you think a good diet would be for me? Yeah. Well, I liked how you said that you're not going to drink any soda. Mm -hmm. That's good because sugar is horrible. Mm -hmm. Um, the fried food is horrible. The Chinese food horrible. Like mm -hmm. you should be eating as least processed as possible. Mm. like and don't be eating no chips i hate that you you know as people will see in the food review like your love for fries mm -hmm. because like the fried in the vegetable oil is just bad like uh, i read this statistic um i don't know the exact numbers off top but whenever they started mass producing vegetable oil and pushing it out the amount of heart disease and heart attacks mm. skyrocketed up now the fda is like pretty corrupt you know right now it's like you shouldn't eat that many carbs but carbs are the base of the food pyramid so they're saying hey eat this this is the thing that's most bad for you but you should be consuming this the most hmm. and they had fat and salts at the top of the food pyramid saying use sparingly now they say you should have like 30 percent of your diet is fat um and they're learning more about the heart attacks and stuff too and like good cholesterol bad cholesterol and whatnot and the, these heart attacks is what they're finding is that it's more about oxidation and inflammation rather than cholesterol and saturated fat and the problem with vegetable oil is is that it causes inflammation way more than the uh the animal fats which back in the day everything used to be cooked in lard mm -hmm. and the heart disease, the obesity, none of that was as prevalent as it is now. So it's like, in the same spirit of <laughs> what's true is not true and what, you know, what I've been saying this whole thing, that's kind of like in the same. Um, and everything changes all the time on nutrition, but I think the best, safest thing to do is cut out as much sugar as you can, drink water, cut down on anything fried mm. don't be no hot pockets even you know unprocessed unprocessed what what do you think i should eat for breakfast no breakfast so like no toast Drink what of about water. fruit fruit's got a lot of a lot of sugar in it so it's not good i mean have a piece here but you don't want to eat a gang of it because you're gonna have a lot of sugar i mean but i'd be like hungry in the morning yeah that's because you're just used to eating in the morning I don't eat every day until afternoon. But what, I mean, I do like physical labor though. Like, You're not going to starve, bro. <laughs> so, you like, you ain't going to, you just, you just used to having that. Like I used to be way fatter than you. 
you know what I mean? Like hey, I'm at, at one point, well, I mean, <laughs> whatever, somewhat, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Overweight. Overweight, whatever. <laughs> I used to eat like shit. I used to not do this. And it's just, oh, I'm not hungry. Like now I don't, I'm up for six, eight hours every day before I eat now. Mm. And that's just what I'm used to now. And I'm not even hungry. Like, there's another thing too. All this bad stuff in your body, like can actually trigger you to crave things that aren't good for you because that bacteria wants it, mm. not you. Mm. Like you don't want that shake. That bacteria wants that shake. Wow. And you know, and there's other documented things in nature where parasites and whatnot can control other animals. Mm -hmm. by fucking with their uh, hormone receptors and wow you know i, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to get too technical because i don't have the facts yeah. to spit it properly but like, they can manipulate yeah like when other beings worm goes inside of like grass or uh grasshoppers mm -hmm. and stuff makes them go into the water exactly it's crazy heck yeah um okay so for lunch then what should i eat it's gonna be around 11 30 12 i've been working i'm tired <laughs> you want to eat I, I need some energy man you want some liquid. but i don't want to be lethargic you're though. gonna want water you're going to want some more protein. Try to do like, you know, 70% protein, 30% carbs. And that carbs could be included in the vegetables. So you don't need a chicken sandwich. Have a piece of chicken. Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, no fries. Less is more. And you're not going to starve. Mm. You know, people can go weeks and weeks and weeks without food. And the only reason you're feeling that is because your blood sugars are used to going up and down all day long it's got to equalize mm. the longer you do that the less you're going to have those spikes and you're going to be able to go out through the day and realize that you're not that hungry mm. you're not running out of energy and when you do eat you'll have it that makes a lot of sense yeah okay so now what about dinner so i get home it's going to be around five six o'clock again or same thing just more protein less carbs so protein could that could be like beans beans is great beans and a piece of chicken mm -hmm. what about pork well, i eat pork but is pork good or no that's kind of a, I, I would say it's fine hmm. it's, a, it's a lean meat like eggs it would have to be like hard-boiled eggs or something like that well i eat eggs every day raw and my shake i'm not gonna do that but um because I'm not going to make a shake at work. Mm, I hear that. But eggs in any form is okay. Mm. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think at work I'd have to hard boil them and bring them to work hard boiled and eat mm. them like that. Yeah. Um. So <clears throat> maybe for a dinner, like a steak or some kind of meat and then some vegetables. What do you think about like a rice or something like that? We don't eat rice or potatoes ever. No rice? No, no rice. Potatoes? No potatoes. No Why pasta. Why no potatoes though? There's too many carbs, man. We don't, you don't need that. Look, here's what I eat. If I the first thing I might eat in a day, well, maybe a can of tuna, no bread. I'll put salt, pepper, and lime juice on it, and eat it out of the can. Mm. Maybe a little bit later. It could vary. Mm -hmm. I like to have my my protein shake after we go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So depending if we get to the gym early enough, I'll just have that tuna. Mm -hmm. Then we we'll go work out. Then I'll have a protein shake when we immediately get out. And then our dinner might be like London broil. It might be a chicken breast, uh, BLT. That's the one thing that we eat that's not all meat is the BLT. Mm. Um, we do hamburger patties with, with fried eggs on top. Flank steak. We eat a lot of steak mm. um, and beans all the time. Like the only vegetable, I mean, and technically, I mean, beans aren't a vegetable. It's a legume. But the only thing like that we eat is like kidney beans, lima beans, pinto beans. Um, see, my goal is 1,800 calories or less and 150 grams of protein. And that's mm. all I try to meet. That's my main requirements. Because mm. I don't require that much. All right. Well, that's very good to know, and I appreciate that. I'm going to try and work on that. We're going to keep it in touch with you guys let you know how my mm -hmm. diet my new year's resolutions and goals have been going um you know before we get out of here do you want do you have any shout outs that you might want to give mm. no not okay. at this juncture um i'll give two shout outs one to shout him. huh i said shout them <laughs> <laughs> one to uh sunshine state heating and air conditioning 
Mm. Shout them out. I appreciate you guys. If you guys have any heating or air conditioning problems or needs, please go through them. Hit up my boy Bobby Barrow. Mm. And then I'd also like to shout out Precision Painting. Shout out to Eric Fields Company. Eric Fields. Very professional. Um, love the work that they do. It looks great. Any painting, you know, needs that you have, residential or commercial, please don't hesitate to hit them up. Um, I appreciate everybody for checking this out. Um, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of content. So please like our stuff, share our stuff, comment, let us know if you want us to see something different Yeah. that, you know, and you know, we want this to be, like we said a couple of times, a hub of mm -hmm. Flagler County commu communication. So yep. any buddy wants to add whatever suggestions mm. you know work with us yeah this is our first venture in this type of thing mm -hmm. um we're working on it i feel like we're getting better right and we're only going to keep getting better right and um and keep in mind everybody this is speaking right now it's episode five i'm gonna be speaking towards like episode 20 to 25 to 30 we're going to be looking to hire some people yeah you know uh interns in the beginning is post production you're you're gonna have to intern for five episodes i think that's fair and then we could talk about it you know because we need to see you're consistent and we're gonna need to see that you're teachable and stuff like that but we're gonna need more help we're gonna need help setting up well not really because the new studio yeah you know what i mean that's yeah. gonna be coming up pretty soon here but um we're yeah. trying to expand and be something for flagway yeah and we're gonna be around here for a long time yeah. I, I predict five to ten years you know what i mean and um this is just the beginning appreciate all of you guys for coming through definitely continue to check out flag weekly tell a friend to tell a friend mm -hmm. all right man appreciate you yep. see you guys later we're out yep.